under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The colors are being presented today in memory of Sergeant Steve Hinkle. Sergeant Hinkle was shot in the line of duty on February the 23rd, 2019, and passed away from his injuries on February the 26th, 2019. Sergeant Hinkle, a 27-year employee of the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office and a member of the Honor Guard. Please remain standing as Mike Reif from the Van Sant Church of Christ, Van Sant, Virginia, offers our invocation. Dear God, we thank you for the peace and the freedom that we enjoy because of the sacrifice of so many men and women who have and who are serving in our military. We thank you for the protection that we receive in our communities because of our local policemen and first responders. We thank you for this track, this race, and its sponsor, and we pray for a safe and entertaining afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Karen Waldrop. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly and the rocket's red glow the bombs bursting Wish together like there's more of them. There's not many of them, Michael. You don't know. Okay. 
No, one, there we are. We're doing it. No, we're just doing it together. So, hello, hello. There it is. Uh, Barry, should we leave the four penalty situation for Larry right or deal with it after? That's good. I talked Thank to Elton you. Sawyer. I got the whole rundown. Hello. So, it's a little convoluted. Yes. Okay. But but Mike, do you think when you give that explanation, oh, unless it doesn't have, unless the, do you think when you give Sounds like they, they're going to talk about that, Shannon. We can just mention. We're going to see Kevin Harvick, so. We are? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> hey, Mike. We're not ask us anything. Cameron. So I'm just going to talk okay. about, you know, um, the, track the most physically talking. demanding race I ever ran was here in 2006. I don't even. Ten seconds. That's special. When you think of Tennessee, usually a couple of things come to mind. Hot chicken, Graceland, whiskey, and Vols Nation. But one thing not as well known that needs to be added to that list is that it's the birthplace of country music. I bet you were thinking I was talking about Nashville, huh? While some people associate this particular town with one of the fastest and most exciting racetracks in NASCAR, that's not the only thing they're infamous for. It's also the official home of some of the first ever commercial recordings for country music, including legendary acts like Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family, which as the great Johnny Cash once put it, was the single most important event in the history of country music. So whether you're looking for action on the pavement or action on the stage, you'll find it right here, for this is Bristol. All right, so the Vols might have rocky top, but we have the top of a building, and that's exactly where you go if you win this race. One of the coolest and most unique victory lanes, I would say, because drivers literally have to drive on top of a building, and there are some guys who have been there many, many times. I know you did it twice, Mikey, in the Xfinity Series. Yeah, that's just the best place to celebrate for your team. Bristol's a macho track, you know? You're a crew guy, you wanna win at Bristol, how good would that be? Well, that guy's done it seven times in the Cup Series, nine times in Xfinity, so he knows his way there. Jimmy Johnson coming off his best finish of the season last week. He also had his best finish of last year here at Bristol. He finished third. Yeah, I mean, look, Jimmy Johnson, Hendrick Motorsports is kind of getting back on track. We we wrote them off mm -hmm. not long ago, and they've qualified on the front row the last couple weeks. Jimmy finished fifth uh, last week at and, and William Byron was sixth, though. I mean, those guys are kind of back on track. How hard is it for Harvick to come back from the from the back of the field today? I want to have a camera on him and yeah. watch those moves, because he's not going to be happy about what happened before the race. Yes, guys getting ready. They say you have to flip a switch inside your helmet, inside your brain when you start racing at Bristol because no more Mr. Nice Guys. It's also time to flip a switch inside the race cars and get these engines started. Let's go trackside to do just that. And now race fans, for the most famous words of motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Bobby Allison. Driver. Your engine. Well, this place is just full of all time greats today. Bobby Allison gives the command. I'm joined by four time champion Jeff Gordon, and Daryl Waltrip is not with us. You've been drafted today for flag stand duty in the wake of your Thursday announcement that this would be your final season in the Fox Sports booth. And Daryl, nobody owns Bristol like you do. 12 wins, seven victories in a row, and that's a mark that will never be equaled at any racetrack. Well, Mike, thank you very much. And uh, what a thrill to be down here on the flag stand. And I get to see that the field is going to come at me here in just a little bit. I've been in the car. I kind of know what that feels like coming to get the green. But I tell you, it's exhilarating. I can't tell you how exciting it is to be up here on this flag stand. I got the green flag. And, you know, I could not wave it. I could say one more guy, one more time around. Well, I'll but give no, you I one won't. piece I'll of advice, Daryl, and that is that 
drop All the right. flag is a figure of speech. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. Drop the hammer. <laughs> I hope Jeff, you're right. Let's talk about the physicality of this place. Yeah, one of the most physically demanding races I've ever run in my career was back in 2016 right here at Bristol. And you know, it, it, my heart rate was so high that I had no choice but to back down my pace. They're going even faster now. And so I expect these drivers not only to just put, push their cars to the limit, but their bodies as well. Well, strategy comes into play. Larry McReynolds. Well, in 2019, Mike, a big storyline has been pit road penalties, speeding, uncontrolled tires. Last week, Denny Hamlin was able to overcome not one but two and still win that race at Texas. Your driver has a problem on pit road today. You're probably going to take yourself right out of contention. And my big question, can DW multitask, boogity, 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 and wave the green flag? <laughs> We're getting close to the green flag at Bristol, the world's fastest half mile, which just got a little faster. Ryan Blaney has a new track record. Will it be enough to get him his first win of the year? Another son of a racer, Chase Elliott, on the pole. Hungry Harvick topped the long run practice list. And no stranger to victory lane are the Bush brothers. 13 combined wins for Kurt and Kyle. A track known to upset tempers could lead to an upset of another kind today. Buckle up. It's Bristol, baby. It's Bristol, baby! Club to a body that Green flag in the air! And I was in love. We're off and racing! And I was just so in our go master battle. Oh, well, I'm a cool home and pray for the battle. My body was made straight from the sun. Spring is in the air. It's the excitement of Bristol, overcast skies. But the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is ready to go on Fox, presented by AstraZeneca. 37 cars rolling off from the backstretch pit. The starting lineup will come across at the bottom of your screen. Chase Elliott, 
the pole sitter and Ryan Blaney new track record holder. Late breaking stories including a big penalty. Let's start with Vince Welch. Well Mike pole winner Chase Elliott got into the wall in final practice yesterday. They were able to continue in practice but there was significant damage done to the car. They didn't get to some of the things they had hoped to do in practice although they were fairly pleased with where they ended up. They weren't 100 percent able to check off all the boxes in that final practice but they made minor adjustments for today. Chevrolet hasn't won a race yet this season. The nine team believes it may happen today for Chase Elliott and company here at Bristol. Matt Yoakum. Vince the inspection issues for Kevin Harvick in the four team the three failures of the rear alignment means that he will drop to the back but also have to do a pass through penalty. Also losing engineer Billy Keebler up on top of the box today will just be Dax Geringer, the other engineer, and Rodney Childers. Now that trio, usually, they manage the strategy together, running through different programs. But today it'll be just those two. Harvick won from the back in 05. Jamie? When you come to Bristol and your driver's name is Kurt Busch, your expectations are elevated. He's a six-time winner here. Won here last August. But their qualifying woes continued on Friday. Car was too loose to drive it. And down on speed. I talked to the team, though. They're confident. Their comeback kid, he has been the comeback kid the last six straight races, will continue today. He's starting 27. Regan Smith. Has had the best couple weeks of any driver out there with a Daytona 500 win and a win at Texas. Asked him what he thought he was going to be able to do today. He simply smiled and said his chances are very good at his third ever back to back win. Pace truck has them in turn one. Green flag next time by. Let's take you right there to the flag stand. Daryl Waltrip. All right, all right, everybody. On your feet, on your feet. We're going to send these people off in the way I love to do it every week. When they come off a of turn four and I wave this green flag, I want to hear you over all these cars. I want these drivers to hear you. You hear me? Give them a Tennessee. Get going. All right. All right. Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We're almost there. Three. Chase Elliott from the outside with the lead, and William Byron is under fire for third. And way up the hill. extremely loose. He gets into the 10 of Eric Amarola. He's in the wall. And Ryan Blaney was on the inside. Oh, big wreck on the back straightaway. Kyle, Kyle Busch. Sideways in the back straightaway. And that was all happening while the four car of Kevin Harvick was trying to serve that penalty on that back straightaway. So first, we're going to show you William Byron with Eric Almirola in the 10 and Ryan Blaney looking in. Yeah, so that low groove, you know, the cars just don't grip up there until you get some heat in the tires. Looks like William Byron's car's a little bit loose. Now he goes down into one and two, gets loose on entry, gets into the 10 of Almirola. That puts him in the wall, and this stacks everything up behind him. And now cars start, it's a domino effect further back. See Kyle Busch here, three wide. Daniel Suarez. Oh, Ooh. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has no idea. They're slowing down. Heavy contact to the rear bumper of the 18 of Kyle Busch. Spins him around. And now you're going to see somebody come in here right at the end of this and actually clip the rear bumper right there. Ryan Priest gets the rear bumper of that 18 car of Kyle Busch. Heavy damage to the nose of the 17 of Stenhouse Jr., Mike. Well, Daryl, you got this party started. That didn't work out quite so well, did it? <laughs> you know, Mike, I might have to do it again. I don't know. <laughs> that didn't go as I had it planned. I told him I have a caution ready, but I didn't know it'd be that quick. By the way, Ricky Stenhouse car, his whole nose is caved in. Mike, I don't think it hurt his radiator, but the whole front of the, the hood and the nose is all caved in. They're probably going to have to come in and do a little work on that car. Now that's our uh, all-access reporter, Boy, Darrell Waltrip, I on so. the flag stand. I didn't At know the scene of the crime, as Ray Stevens would have said in the street. I didn't know Darrell was going to get a chance to throw the green and the yellow all at once. Now let's update you on Kevin Harvick, who took the green flag on the racetrack under green, darted down pit road to serve his pit.
penalty. And what's the outcome there, Larry? All right, the penalty is served, but because he had not made it all the way to that line in turn three, he's not eligible for the free pass. But regardless, with the field slowing down, that caution was a blessing for Kevin Harvick. He's only one lap down now, and so he will be eligible for the next caution. So honestly, a true blessing. And there's the damage on Eric Almirola's car. William Byron got a little bit of that when he slid up track into Almirola, but Byron just didn't get a good start. Well, he didn't get a good start. The car was just extremely loose, and he's trying to hold his position best he could, but un unfortunately he had a car of Eric Almirola to his outside and pretty heavy damage. Jamie? And Kyle Busch came in once just to assess the damage, just came back in. The right rear quarter panel, bumper cover, they pulled it out, added some tape, and put tires on it this time. And the 24, you guys mentioned just some right front damage. They're not too concerned about that. And, and you can see right there, not a lot of support to that quarter panel where it meets the edge of the bumper on the right rear. That is a critical area for aerodynamics, even on a short track here at Bristol. Some damage to the nose of Daniel Hemrick's car. And we've learned that Eric Almirola dragged some equipment uh, out of pit road. There's where Ryan Priest got damage catching the back end of Kyle Busch coming around. And there's Eric Almirola with a oh, jack, stand. jack stand. Oh my. And he's now taken that car behind the wall. Matt. Mike, they took a look at the suspension on the 10 car. They've got some bent pieces, so they're going to pull the car like you documented behind the wall to make repairs. Crew is running toward it. Stenhouse under repair. Boy, a lot of action in just one lap here at Bristol. Here's William Byron's radio. Just doesn't come in. Tried running down there. Yeah, I don't know what you can do, man. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what we can do about that. Yeah. Coming to green. Lights are out on the safety truck. He heads for the safety of Pitt Road. And it will be Chase Elliott and Eric Jones. Elliott shoots away, joined by Clint Boyer. And you can see a lot of these cars really preferring that middle lane, not the lane that the traction compound is in. It. I've heard a lot of these drivers say until some rubber gets laid down in that lower lane, it takes a little bit of time for that grip to come in there. Before the weekend and each morning, the track has added some of that spray on traction compound to different areas of the low groove, trying to give us a true two lane racetrack. Oh, Eric Jones slid coming up off turn two, and you saw him slip up the racetrack and out of third and maybe fourth place. See Ryan Blaney trying to take advantage of that slip up. Here's a replay. Eric Jones underneath the 48 car gets really loose off of turn two, loses a lot of momentum, and Ryan Blaney sneaks to the inside. Larry? Hey, guys, bad news for Eric Almirola in that 10 car. Remember, because of the damage repair policy, if you go to the garage area, if you leave Pitt Road, you can't repair that car. He's out for the day. He will be credited with a 37th place finish. Wow, really oh, unfortunate set of circumstances for the 10 of Almirola. That's going to end a six race streak for Eric Almirola of top tens so far this season. Clear, 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 clear. In line, in line. Ryan Newman, look at Newman way up high coming off the corner. He and Chris Busher are trying to work in that top groove real early. What we would normally see right here, Mike, is the 42 of Kyle Larson up top trying to work in that top groove. Right now, it looks like everybody's hunting for the bottom. I think it's going to take a little while before that top groove really starts to work and come in. And I promise you, one of the first guys you're going to see up there is right there on the screen, the 42 of Kyle Larson. Third place, Laney takes it away from Jimmy Johnson. And Ricky Stenhouse, one lap down, in more trouble. Black flag. Next time for Stenhouse, should he not come in? I'm not exactly sure how he could even see it there. He's looking through the uh, hood flap. Now, something I'm anxious to see here today in this race is we've seen a lot of cars having trouble staying on the bottom, a little bit loose. 
But as the runs go on, as that rubber starts to build, that outside group comes in, are these cars that are loose going to be the cars that are fast at the end of a run? And we saw Larson go to the top side in one and two to let Alex Bowman by. Oh, big wiggle right yep. there for Kyle Larson. He's just super loose right now. I, I heard a lot of teams talking about anticipating the cars to tighten up, but boy, right now they're all really loose. Chase Elliott to the top in one and two, our race leader. 15 18 the last time by. He's also up high in and, three and four. And he's also coming up on some lap traffic. And the lap time is slower by about three tenths. Regan. Well, Jeff, to your point, the 20 car of Eric Jones, crew chief Chris Gale, told me his driver was going to have to play defense for the first 20 laps of a run because he had to leave the car loose so it would be good at the end of the run. So no surprise he's lost two spots early on in the race here. Jones' sponsor, Craftsman, will donate a million dollars to a children's hospital charity should Eric Jones wind up in victory lane today. That'll add some motivation. Chase Elliott up on Clint Boyer now by 1.4 seconds. Yeah, Chase, he's in cruise control mode right now. I, I don't know what his car's going to be like on the long run, but on the short run when this uh, race got the green flag, he was shot out of a cannon. Multitasking. Bristol is his house. was the biggest physical challenge of the year for the drivers. Intense and, and wide open for 500 laps. Bristol is just crazy, stuff all over the place, and it's it's never calm. So there's no other place that you're, you're racing as hard as you are uh, for an extended period of time as Bristol. Racing at Bristol is the biggest physical challenge of the year for the drivers. Intense and, and wide open for 500 laps. Bristol is just crazy, stuff all over the place, and it's it's never calm. There's no other place that you're, you're racing as hard as you are uh, for an extended period of time as Bristol. 34 laps complete. Kyle Busch and William Byron recovering well from that lap one incident. That has left Ricky Stenhouse now seven laps down after repair and Eric Almirola out of the race after pulling into the garage hoping to make repairs. Our leader Chase Elliott he's led every lap all 35 of them after starting in the outside lane on the initial green flag from Darrell Waltrip and now he's getting in a race traffic including Ryan Priest who had to go to a backup car. They tore some parts off the rear suspension uh, while running 
yesterday. When well, you could see some smoke on the 47 of Ryan Priest. I think he's made some contact. We know he made contact with the 18 of Kyle Busch, but he had uh, some contact maybe with the 36 of Matt Tiff. Sixth place, Jimmy Johnson. And there's a replay as Priest. Oh, no, their leader, Chase Elliott, goes around. Right in the front straight away. We're good, we're good, we're good. And brings out the caution at lap 39. Yeah, 10 4. 10 4. There's the damage. I think Ryan maybe Priest. the 47 cut that left rear tire down that was rubbing. Yeah, he sure did. Oh. The 32 of uh, Corey LaJoy. Pretty amazing job by. Chase Elliott to go around and have minimal, really no damage other than the damage from Corey LaJoy when Corey LaJoy got in the back of him and turned him around because he was on the brakes heavy seeing the 47 of Ryan Priest going around. Boy, look how close the nose was wow. to that inside wall. That was about to ruin Chase Elliott's day. What a save. Now here's Priest trying to stay on the lead lap without success. And uh, Corey LaJoy could not check up. Look how close a shave that was. Maybe just a touch, but it doesn't look like there's enough damage for them to maybe have to come in. But you can see the, the left rear tire was smoking on the 47. Ryan Priest for a couple laps there. Finally goes down. Chase Elliott, nowhere to go. Wow. Daryl, look what you've caused today. <laughs> My what did you do when I, you started this? I, I, I dropped the green flag, and the next thing she's poking me in the back with the yellow flag. I said, you got to be kidding. <laughs> All right, here's what Ryan Priest had to say. Cut a tire, cut a tire. Lewis just cut a tire. When Corey, when I went by Corey, he hit me in the left rear. Now you can see that the nine car, his roof flap came up. So they're going to have to fix that a little bit too. Matt? Looking for a little bit more grip on the 14, the Clint Bohr, the first stall off turn two. They've already completed a chassis adjustment, four tires, and he's away, Jamie. The turn four section at Pitt Road. Eric Jones is going to head to the pits right now. It's going to be a two-tire stop for him. The only thing he wants is more grip out of this race car for later on in this next run. Vince? Chase Elliott coming in. He's got a little bit of left rear damage and maybe a little bit of right front damage. He said he definitely feels like there's a rub in the right front and it has gotten drastically tighter. So he's a little concerned about the power steering. They've also got that left rear roof flap as well that they're going to have to address on the nine. It could have been a lot worse though as he exits. Remember at Bristol under caution it's one long continuous pit road. You enter at turn two. Come around, pit road at three and four, everybody does, and exit at turn one. Second caution of the day for this.
Finishing up the second caution of the day at Bristol, here's today's Ford Performance Track Facts. Fred Lorenzen was the first driver to sweep both Bristol races in 1964. You're riding with Joey Logano, a two-time Bristol winner. Ford has now won three of the last four short track cup races. Matt Benedetto commitment cone violation, and Bubba Wallace too fast entering are the penalties. Denny Hamlin stayed out from eighth place, did not pit. He will lead them to green. I thought that's a good call, Mike, staying out. Uh, not that many laps on tires. Pretty good call. I think it's a great call if I had about six more behind me. <laughs> right. Nobody else stayed out. So here comes Boyer and Jones and everybody else who was on pit road in lap 41. But Mike, I think that tells you a lot about that car and that driver. They have confidence in their car. And oh, the nine of Chase Elliott had an issue. Yeah, there's something wrong with that nine car. He's got a problem. Well, he's gathered it back up. Here's what happened lower right of your screen. Oh. I think he just got a little bit loose right there. Vince? Yeah, they're definitely concerned about the way that car is handling and listen to this radio with Chase in regards to potential power steering issue. Only does it to the right and you know, it feels like the power steering could just intermit. Like, you know, it's way worse than it was in practice. You know, like there's like it's not getting hardly any fluid back through it when you turn back right. What's your uh, engine temperature? Hot. That might be it. Boy, that'll make for a long day at Bristol, especially. New leader, Eric Jones, as the Joe Gibbs Toyotas battle for the front spot. Yeah, now, Mike, weren't we just talking about Eric Jones a little bit ago? He's lo too loose and fallen back, and now he's our leader. Yeah, well, a little bit. In that intermittent power steering problem, that can be from low air pressure. You left the layer way down in these left side tires. The power steering struggles to keep up with it. Well, also, Darrell, remember the pace is so fast this weekend. A lot of load on these cars through the corners. And I was concerned coming into this weekend, it was going to be extremely tough on power steering pumps today. And then you heard him talk about the engine is getting hotter. That's causing more issues with that power steering. Second place. Here comes Blaney. Oh, I think Blaney. He's just, he's just starting to set him up. I, I think he is extremely fast right now and knows how to get around this place. Well, he broke the track record, and I think he, he I think he felt like he should have settled the pole. He got a little greedy in turn three qualifying, but his car has been fast all weekend. Off the truck fast. Jeff, low lane versus high groove. What do you gain? What do you lose with each? Well, right, you, you always want the shortest way around. If the grip level is there on the bottom, like we see Ryan Blaney taking that shorter route, that's going to be the fastest way. But as the run goes on, as the air pressure builds up, as the tires start to go away, the brakes heat up, I think you're going to start to see that top groove get worked in. And once it gets worked in, once rubber lays down in that top groove, I think that will be the place to, to make up your best lap time. Yeah, you get a lot of momentum, Mike, off of both corners, turn two and off of turn four. You get a lot of momentum when you run that high line. 55 complete, two cautions in the early going and a lot of damage in Bristol. It's here and it's available today at your local Chevy dealer. The all.
Cars, but just stop. It's right here. Second. All blue, all blue. Here you go. It's here and it's available today at your local Chevy dealer. The all new Silverado. The strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. 67 laps complete. Eric Jones was the leader when we went to break. Surrendered the lead to Ryan Blaney. As Jones had an issue which would bring him to pit road and it wasn't easy getting there. Regan. Well, Mike, he reported for the two laps before that contact we just saw that he had a loose wheel. It got bad very quickly. He had to get, pit, get to pit road immediately. Fortunately, he was able to hit pit road, get that change, but a loose wheel in the 20 car. Jamie? And Kyle Larson in the 42 just radioed to his crew that he had a vibration. They barely had a moment to get ready. He said, I'm coming. It's getting worse in a hurry. He just pitted for four tires. Now, Kevin Harvick who did not get the free pass on the second caution of the day. That went to Landon Castle. Harvick has now made a green flag pit stop for four tires, so he is four laps down. Matt. Mike, when he hit pit road, Rodney Childers first said two, then he called four tires. After the stop, Childers and car chief Chenner Bob Smith looked at all the wheels. They diagnosed that the right front was loose. That's why he had the vibration. Well, Mike, it's just, it's just not going well for the four car today. They've had trouble inspection and penalty and Loose wheels, man, they are falling apart today. Denny Hamlin beginning to sift through the field. Restarted first. He did not come to pit road for tires on that caution. Hamlin now in seventh. Hey, Mike, I take back. I thought that was a good call. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. It well, was it a, was a good call for a, a little great, while. Yeah, a great short term <laughs> call. Yeah, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. We'll fix it, though. Well, again, Daryl, I really think when you make that kind of call, you're hoping that there's a lot of others, and you're thinking that more behind you are going to do that same thing, but not the case. Kyle Larson, uncontrolled tire oh, good grief. on ah. his stop, his green flag stop. Uh. There he comes to service penalty. We saw a couple of these last week and got clarification on the rule. A crewman must be within an arm's length and moving in the same direction as that tire. Usually it happens on the rear. That time it was the front. That is the first such penalty for Kyle Larson's team this season. And what, what NASCAR is looking for when they're calling that is if that tire is rolling away while you're doing other work, and it's not that it was really more than an arm reach away, but that uh, person that was changing that right front tire really wasn't attending to it. Yeah, I just think it got to change the language a little bit. That tire was not uncontrolled. It's just sitting there. So we got to figure out a better way of explaining what, what's going on there. Brian Blaney has led 216, 17 this time, laps this season. And led a bunch of laps here last year, but was denied the win getting caught up in someone else's crash. Vince? That's right, Mike. In fact, they led laps in both races here last year, and they felt like they had a car that could have won both races here last year. And as you said, he's led a lot of laps this year, so it's no surprise to see him out front. But every break they have gotten this season seems to have been a bad break, and that's why they've got four finishes outside the top 20. But his crew chief, Jeremy Bullens, told me this morning, we've been good enough to win, and if we can execute and avoid a bad break, we'll do it. They are off to a good start today. He led 100 laps in this race a year ago, 121 in August. But here's what happened last spring. Battling with his teammate Brad Keselowski when some cars ahead of him got together. And boy, he had nowhere to go. Took 
Ryan Blaney out of a great opportunity to win this race. So he's sitting in this same position now, Daryl. Yeah, Mike, he, he has a big lead. He's got a huge lead. He's got a fast car. He can win this race. The driver's got to not get himself in a bad spot. He didn't have anything to do with what happened here last year. I understand that. But be cautious. you got a long way to go. Take care of that car. Get us to the end. We can win this thing. Fourth place, Jimmy Johnson uh, moving back up here. Well, we saw this last week at Texas, but I go back the week before that, Martinsville, a track that usually Jimmy Johnson is one of the best at. They struggled like I've never seen the 48 team struggle in Jimmy Johnson, but this is the kind of form that we're used to out of Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, real close racing action there with the two of Brad Keselowski. Keselowski has the better car, I believe, right now. Just cannot seem to clear Jimmy Johnson. But yeah, those, the wins, they, they come like so easy. You think, I'll be doing this my whole life. Then somebody flips a switch, and it gets hard, and you lose a little bit of confidence. He's building his confidence back up. Last week was a big confidence booster. This week, running well, good confidence booster. Larry watching Denny Hamlin. He's now cycled to eighth place. He's the only car that's not had fresh tires since the start of this race. Uh, we have 23 lead lap cars. How long can Hamlin ride this out? Well, he's got to ride it out to the end of stage one, Mike. You know, we're, we're only about, what, uh, 37 laps from the end of stage one, so he's got to ride it out. They've kind of made their bed. They'll just have to lay in it. He's, he's not going to be in jeopardy, I don't think, of going a lap down. Thanks, Larry. Ryan Blaney, Clint Boyer, Joey Logano with 89 laps complete. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Welcome back to Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series racing at Bristol, presented by AstraZeneca. Ryan Blaney with a second and a half lead over Clint Boyer, Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, and Jimmy Johnson. And look who's in the top 10 for the first time today, the Candyman, Kyle Busch, ninth place. He restarted 23rd. Yeah, after that spin, it has not taken Kyle Busch long to work his way back up into the top 10, working on his teammate Denny Hamlin for the eighth position. I sure like the way that 12 car looks. Boy, he's awesome. 24 laps to go in stage one. Here's Ryan Blaney's radio. We're just a little bit tight on exit. I get a little bit loose in. 
on entry. I probably got a ram or something over here because I was getting tight. So it's it probably better on exit a little bit, but probably in bottom. And, and Mike, this is a guy leading the race, and he's telling what he needs to adjust his car and make it a little bit better. That's going to be pretty. You're going to be in trouble if he gets any better. I could tell you, fast race cars at Bristol, a little loose in, a little tight off. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Teammates battling for fifth place, Vince. Well, the situation with Chase Elliott, remember he talked earlier about how he felt like the power steering was an issue. It has not gotten better. In fact, he said it's gotten a little worse. So imagine going around this place 500 times with no power steering. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson, he says it just has a real heavy wheel to it, not handling the way he'd like. Hey, Vince, a lot of guys probably can't imagine that, but I can. No power steering? No power steering. Been there, done that, right? <laughs> well, what Chase Elliott is talking about is about turning back to the right. He seems to be fine as long as he's feeding the wheel to the left. So as long as they keep that car tightened up and he doesn't get loose, it might be all right. I was just watching Ryan Blaney wind his way through traffic. Look at him threading the needle right here between two cars. Quinn Huff on the inside. Matt Tift was up on the outside. And that has knocked Blaney's lead down to just over one second over Clint Boyer. Matt? Mike, in practice, Clint Boyer felt like he had a versatile race car, knowing he would start out as a bottom feeder as he is now. But at some point, you're going to see the fast cars move up top. And he's been hugging that bottom of the car a little bit on the tight side in clean air. He's about a tenth faster than the leader. Yeah, you're right, Matt. That's pretty impressive. If you see where all the fast cars are running right now, they're all running towards the top, but not the 14 of Clint Boyer. That could work really well for him if nobody else is running his groove. Boyer's the only car in the top four that is not a Penske Ford. No, he is, and, but, but listen, a tenth faster, I can live with that. It's going to take a long time before I see that guy in my rearview mirror. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin swapped spots. They came up on a lapped car, and Kyle jumped on the brake, did a gentlemanly thing, let Hamlin go, passed him one lap later, and drove off. Jamie? Kyle Busch is just on a run. You see the damage, significant damage on the back end of that car. He's cleared two additional times today to fix it and battle for the lead right now. And they continue to work on that car with the 18. Kyle Busch saying he's on top of the track, lacking a little bit of grip. And guys, it's amazing when we come to Bristol. The drivers on the radio out of breath, no matter who they are. But the thing about Clint Boyer, he won. He, he's, he's to come to like a short track ace. He really likes his short tracks. Here he is challenging Blaney for the lead. Uh, that 14 car and Boyer look pretty pretty racy right now, guys. Great battle for the lead. Traffic will play a factor. Daniel Hemrick right there. Boyer wanting the bottom, Blaney up top, and Boyer's going to have to wait for another chance. Well, and this is exactly what's brought Clint Boyer to the front to battle for the lead, is that some of these cars have been holding up Blaney on the outside. Now, Boyer's having to deal with the same thing on the inside lane. More traffic ahead. Ross Chastain, Austin Dillon, Paul Menard. Still there. Clint Boyer led 120 laps here last August. Mike, I watched Blaney, and he's being really, really cautious through this traffic. I think he's got flashbacks of last year. He's really taking his time with most of these lap cars. We could see right there just how much yeah. better Clint Boyer is on the bottom of the racetrack. His car's turning really strong. And Boyer just gave Blaney the boot. Blaney had to lift for Austin Dillon. Boyer didn't look like he meant to get into Blaney. But oh, oh, we got one in the wall. Eight yeah, car. Yeah. Daniel Hemrick. Run over, yellow, 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 yellow. Should be you. With seven to go in stage one, Daniel Hemrick goes around in turn one. I don't think, look. It could look like he just, the car just spun. Um. A little help from the oh, Yeah, you know, they'll spin when somebody <laughs> puts their bumper up under you like that. Ra Ross Chastain in that 15 car. What is it about Bristol? You're riding with Joey Logano? I mean, it doesn't take much, but there's no doubt about it. Ross Chastain made contact the aid of Daniel Hemrick. But no doubt about that 22 getting on the brakes pretty hard, too. I, I'm pretty sure that's the way it ended, or my day went when I was a rookie, too, <laughs> here at Bristol. 
<laughs> Chris will always do that to you, baby. Austin Dillon will be the free pass car. Larry, f six laps to go on the stage. What do you do? Well, I think we're going to get started back. You see Boyer in the 14 stays out, but Blaney drags his two team Penske. Boyer, Michael Bugaravich, they're banking on this thing, basically going near the end of this stage, but trying to get this stage win. That's the only reason you stay out. Look, I think as you, I said it earlier and I was wrong, but I believe in this situation with only a few laps to go in this stage, you stay out and get those stage points. Those are very important. Well, I feel it's a pretty easy call for the 22 of Lagana and the two of Keselowski. They already have wins and uh, uh, playoff points. Regan? Well, it was a quick debate on the radio for Brad Keselowski. He thought he wanted to stay out, but Paul she, crew chief Paul Wolf said to go ahead and pit right here. His race car is just a little bit too tight in the middle of that run and too free towards the end of it. Vince? Just too tight for the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Four, uh, four tires, and they're going to put some air pressure in that right rear. As for the 22 of Joey Logano, the same. Tight for Logano. Can't come down the hill. Can't get a turn the way he wants. Air pressure and four tires. Of course, Logano and Keselowski already locked into the playoffs with victories. Nothing to lose with this strategy. You got that right. Clint Boyer is your race leader. Uh, here's our built for the playoffs, sponsored by Ram. At this time last year, Boyer had a victory. Martinsville, what does he need to do to make the playoffs and thrive? Well, keep doing what he's doing because he finished second last week in Texas, running really strong here today. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's a problem with getting the season started off a little slow, but he's certainly starting to gain a lot of momentum right now in the performance. Darrell, to make the top 16, does Boyer need a win, or can he point his way in? Well, he could point his way in, Mike, but assurance is you get that win. And I think he knows that. Uh, last year, it, it made it easy for him, and that's what you want to do. You want to get that win on your belt, then you know you're going to be in the final, in the chase. Uh, points are great, and you could point your way in, but get that win. That's what's important right now, and he knows that. So the cars that stayed out were Boyer, Ty Dillon, and Paul Menard. They'll be the first three as we get ready to get back to green here, coming to the end of stage one. A lot of issues today. Uh, Kevin Harvick failed inspection three times, then had a loose wheel. Chase Elliott got spun from the lead. Kyle Busch was caught up in that. Eric Jones had a loose wheel, and so did Kyle Larson along with a penalty. Now, Larry, I'm interested to hear from a crew chief. I mean, we know that all these other guys are going to stay out. How, how is this going to affect that 14 of uh, Boyer and the others that have stayed out here? Well, I don't have a good feeling about Menard and that 21 back there on row two, but if I'm Michael Bugaravich with Clint Boyer, I'm going to tell him, reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time and don't look in the rear view mirror. <laughs> I'm with you, Larry, but I don't, I don't know if you have to tell Boyer that or not. <laughs> All right, the new Chevy Silverado pulls away from the field, ducks onto pit road, and here we go. Clint Boyer against Ty Dillon. Paul Menard and Brad Keselowski. A big shove from Brad Keselowski to the 13 of Ty Dillon. Outside, outside, just got one outside. to one to go here, man. Hey, that about Ty Dillon? He says, hey, not so quick. Oh, he oh, gets loose off a of four. All clear behind, all clear. Now, this is not going to plan for Clint Boyer right now. No, if he doesn't win this stage, it's, a bad, it's not going to end well for him. Green and white really checkered close. flag in the air. Is going to get Stage the winner is Ty Dillon. Dillon. Wow. How about that? So here we are. We're all predicting that 14 is going to get him some stage points in. He did, but not what he thought. He did not get the playoff point that he wanted for winning that stage. Ty Dillon. That's pretty close, Mike. <laughs> Ty Dillon, your stage one winner, his first ever.
The finish of stage one, Ty Dillon on the outside, a little bump and bang, and he holds off Clint Boyer in a near photo finish for the end of stage one. Richard Childress up on the party porch got to celebrate his youngest grandson's first ever Cup Series stage win. And we'll talk to him after pit stops. Let's see who's in, Matt. And Clint Boyer will hit his box first in the 14 car. Ryan Mulder and Coleman Dollar had the changers going to work. You've already seen Dwayne Moore put the wrench in the back window. They reversed the wedge adjustment they made on the previous stop, Jamie, because he felt like that the car just was a little bit too tight in that run. How about Ty Dillon? So much emotion on the radio. You see some damage on his car. That was a hard fought stage win, a four tire stop. Happy with the balance, just need a little bit more lateral grip. Now the three drivers who did not stop during that caution a few laps ago came in along with Chase Elliott. He's the only driver who stopped earlier that also comes in at the end of the stage. He's still on pit road. Let's see if we can't dial him up here. Hey Ty, this is Jeff up the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, I got you Jeff. So let me get off pit road here. All right, All right crossing that cars come on by here and we'll double up all right buddy sorry about that man that was exciting what a great job congrats tell us what it feels like to win your first stage win here at bristol man jeff uh, i don't even know how to put it in words uh it is a stage but it means a lot to our our Jermaine race and our geico team we worked really hard uh it's been a big year for us and we're going to keep it running this way we know we're capable of winning races and glad we can show you guys what we're made up here a little bit all right, man. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, man. There's Richard Childress getting a bit of celebration for his younger grandson, Ty Dillon. Stage one winner.
I, I hear you. Saturday on FS1, Rockies Giants at 4 Eastern, followed by Robinson Cano and the Mets taking on Freddie Freeman and the Braves. MLB doubleheader Saturday on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. A little <laughs> New York Giants That's logo. Let's have a little fun as the cars approach the Geico restart zone. Keslowski Logano, Johnson Kyle Bush up to fourth. Blaney Truex, Newman Suarez, Hamilton D. Benedetto, the top 10. William Byron got the free pass. He'll start 18th. A heck of a start with that two car. Half, lane lower. Half, first three are clear. Ooh, ooh, that 18 car is there, guys. Watch out now. Look and, the night, and the 19 is coming. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mark Trex Jr. has been nice and quiet. Ryan Blaney makes a great move to go to the inside of Jimmy Johnson, but don't count out Truex. He can still get that short track win here this season. Well, Jeff, I, as I watch all the cars the early in this race, I'll still take that 12 car. If I, had, if I had to pick one on one to drive, I think it'd be that 12 because he looks pretty racy right now. Matt Benedetto had a penalty earlier and uh, up into eighth spot now. Mike, and that would put this right in one. This is probably his best racetrack, one of his favorite racetracks. That's a good race car and a good race team and I think they will get better before the year's over with. Yeah, and a good race car driver too and you know he had to have this place marked on his calendar this weekend. Now Ricky Stenhouse has gone behind the wall. He had body damage earlier but because they repaired it and he got back up beyond minimum speed Stenhouse is no longer under the damage vehicle policy so he's behind the pit wall repairing a mechanical problem and is allowed to do so for that reason. Pretty, pretty certain he wasn't getting much airflow underneath the hood of that car into that radiator or anything else if it has anything to do with trying to keep those components cool. Sixth place, Daniel Suarez. Mike, what was always interesting about this place, our leader's at the line. Look here. He's at the line right now, and there are cars that are almost a half lap down. We've only been back to green here a few laps. When you're up front like that and you're at the back of the field, it's amazing how quick that leader will catch you and put you a lap down. Joey Logano going to try to go up top. I, I tell you, Joey Logano has had a strong car. Look at this move to the inside of the two. He got a big run off the top. He's going to go to the bottom down door, here, three and still four. There, still there, door, 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 still there. Off the, sorry, off a of turn two. Yeah, there. off the corners where that 22 is so still good. He can there. hang the bottom and stay in the gas. I, I've been watching the 22 of Joey Logano all weekend long, and one thing I've noticed about his car, similar to what we saw with the 14 car, little bump from from his teammate Brad Keselowski as he makes that pass. Just like the 14 of Boyer, his car can hook the bottom as good or better than any other car I've seen out there all weekend long. Vince? Yeah, you know, if you're going to win this race, you're going to have to run bottom and top at some point in this race. And that's one of the things they felt was the strong point of their car this weekend, the versatility. They feel like it's good on the bottom, but really, really good up top. They said if this race goes to the top for long runs, that's where they think they'll be the strongest. But he's looking pretty good down in that traction compound right now. And, and we were talking about the pace of this race, and now he's off the, off the pace over off turn two over there. But the... Right now, the pace of this race, Mike, the last time by, 15.20. So, I mean, you don't have any place to rest or take a break. Denny Hamlin needs a break. He restarted ninth. He's back to 15th, and here comes Kyle Larson. Well, I just wonder, Mike, you know, his car was pretty good in the long runs, which is why they stayed out uh, that one time when everybody else came. And I think he was feeling pretty good about the balance of his car. Just wonder if this car is really, really loose uh, at the beginning of a run on tires. And here is Kyle Busch in third behind the two Penske Ford. Another thing I'd say, you know, about uh, the 11 of, of, of Denny Hamlin, he's one of those that's kind of fallen into the clutches of some of those others that came in and put tires on. So some of those guys have about 10, 12 fresher, uh, 12 laps fresher tires on right now.
And now, a quick word from Duraso. This is the number one trusted brand. Joey Logano out front of his teammate Brad Kozlowski by eight tenths. Kyle Busch in third. If Busch finishes in the top ten today, he will be the first driver to start a cup season with eight straight top tens in 27 years. Terry Labonte, 1992. Wow. That, you know, records, that's what I love about records. I love when somebody breaks one of them, as long as it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Very tough to break, it, break any records you have here, DW. Uh, well, it'll happen, I bet you, one day. <laughs> Yeah, but one of the guys that might be able to do it is that guy, that right, guy there. right there I'm in the 18. <laughs> Fourth place here. Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex, and Truex has had a couple of runs at Blaney, but not able to get by. But this seems like that transition period uh, of a run where the bottom's pretty good for a while, and then you don't know, your car starts to go away on the bottom. You want to run to the top, but the top's not quite rubbered in just yet. I, I, I might be wrong. I might be missing the boat here, but I swear it looks to me like Blaney is just not on a Sunday drive, but he's not pushing it right now. I think he knows he's got a fast car. I think he believes he can win this race. He doesn't want to have happen to him this year what happened to him last year. So I think he's being very cautious. Well, and I think also he might be uh, cautious right now, but also it looks like those Gibbs Toyotas are starting to come on now. Kyle, Kyle Busch is 18, moving forward, getting to the rear bumper of the two cars. So is the 19 of Truex. So we ride on board here with Austin Dillon. Daryl, that style, you used to describe it as being aggressive, smooth. Yeah. Well, is it possible to do both in I today's think, car? I think it is, Mike. One thing that changed this racetrack, people don't think about this very often, but when I won a lot of races here, we started 36 cars. So you, were, you weren't always racing somebody. You weren't always in traffic. You had a little bit of time to catch your breath. With all the cars on the track now, and you can see it looks like a conveyor belt around here, you never, are, you never get a break. You're either passing somebody, somebody's trying to pass you. There's always something going on that makes it so difficult here to even relax and, and, and take a break and, and let those muscles relax a bit. I used to cramp up here so bad, I couldn't walk when this race was over with. And we, you know, we talked to some, some drivers before the race started, and they were all talking about breathing. It's so hard to manage your breathing here in these 15, 15 and a half second laps, especially on these long green run, uh, flag runs. Well, let's take a look at today's Driving Trust, Larry, sponsored by Duracell. Yeah, we're going to take a look at the 11 team, Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin, Crew Chief Chris Gabehart, and spotter Chris Lambert. This year is Denny's 14th full-time season in the Cup Series. He has 33 Cup wins, including two Daytona 500s. Chris Gabehart became the crew chief for that team this year in 2019. At one point several years ago, he was the race engineer for Denny in the 11 team. Denny and Chris together won an Xfinity Series race at Michigan in 2017. And we've been talking about the traction compound at the bottom of the racetrack. Chris a few laps ago told Denny to use it sparingly, that it will wear the left side tires. And I think Denny knowing what Chris is telling him, that has to be a little bit of Duracell driving track. Trust. Thanks, Larry. We've been watching our front row sitters battle, except it's for 17th. Uh, Chase Elliott now ahead of William Byron as they come up on traffic. Eric Jones just ahead of him. And Jones two laps down after an earlier loose wheel. Vince? Chase Elliott came in a couple of different times uh, during uh, the last opportunity. And he's still having the issue with the power steering. So they raised the hood on the front stop. And unfortunately for them, they didn't find anything glaring that stood out to them that they could address. So they really weren't able to help him with the power steering. He says the arms are going to fall off by the end of this thing. And also the car continues to run hot. So they pull tape off the front end of the nine. But it might be a long day before it's all said and done. Well, the very first cup race here at Bristol, 1961 was won by a, a relief driver. Yep, it was. That happened a lot. Not winning, but there are always drivers. Richard Petty had a, a relief driver here quite often. A lot of guys did. It was hard to run 500 laps here with one driver. 330 laps to go. If he's having power steering issues now, might be a very good chance. They might be looking for a relief driver. I'm available. <laughs> Logano and Keslowski, 1.9 seconds apart for the lead.
182 laps complete in the Food City 500. Joey Logano leading his Penske Ford teammate Brad Kozlowski now by three seconds. Martin Truex has closed right up battling with Brad for second. And it, you know it's not unusual to see this 19 car come on strong later in the run. He's had a long run car a good long run car almost everywhere we've been this year Mike. Kevin Harvick had inspection issues pre race had to start at the back do a pass through penalty and then had a loose wheel. He is now three laps down expected to contend today. And our front row had uh, issues. William Byron got caught up in a lap one crash that ended up taking Eric Almirola out of the race. And our pole sitter Chase Elliott has been fighting power steering issues. He is the last car on the lead lap. Kyle Busch was also caught up in that lap one dust up but he has recovered nicely. Currently yeah. fourth four and a half seconds off the lead. The damage the rear of Kyle, car, Kyle Busch's car the 18. It just shoved the rear bumper cover in. It didn't. It didn't affect the spoiler or any other part of the rear of the car. So I don't think that's had any real. It might have had a good effect. It might help this car. Got the rear bumper up out of the way. Jamie. And he hasn't really complained about that all at all since he had the damage. And I talked to Adam Stevens, his crew chief, coming in. He said, "All right, we know we're going to struggle early, but if we're good early, we're probably not going to be good later on." So Kyle Busch telling him right now, it feels like the rear springs are too stiff. He said, "We are gripped out, and the 22 is gone." So Adam Stevens telling his driver, "We have plenty of laps. Hang in there. We'll fix it." Yeah, Daryl, I'm with you. As long as the braces hold that right rear quarter panel, that bumper being pushed up like that. Is only an advantage. It lets the air out on the car a lot better than if it was down hanging down. So, uh, unintended consequences, but it could be a, actually help him a little bit. Daniel Suarez in sixth, challenging Blaney for fifth. How about that Suarez kid? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you that kid's gonna win a race. Matt. Mike, his runs here in the past haven't been indicative of how well he's actually run. Remember last year, he spun early but rebounded to finish 11th. He was hugging that bottom, much like Cliff Boyer was earlier when he saw Blaney move up to the middle. That's when he moved up the car a little bit on the free side on entry into one. You know, guys, Bristol's one of those tracks where, yes, yeah, setups evolve, but they don't change dramatically from one way to the other. And when I look at that 41 car, when we were last here last August, it was that car, crew chief Billy Scott, that went to victory lane with Kurt Busch, their only win of 2018. And, and you know what I like about Suarez, uh, 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 Larry? We don't, I don't hear him complain a lot on the radio. He just, he works his hands and not his mouth. And I think that's huge. Chase Elliott going a lap down to Joey Logano. Yeah, I've been really watching Chase Elliott. I think his car right now is probably a little bit better than his arms are because he must really be still fighting that power steering pump. You just can tell he's not able to put that car on the edge and get the most speed out of it. If he ends up needing relief, the only drivers out of the race are Eric Almirola, a great Galding in the 51, and now Ricky Stenhouse has taken his Ford to the hauler. That'd be a, that would be a, a Ford driver and a Chevrolet. I don't know how that would work out, but Stenhouse would be a good relief driver. When he gets around this place really good also, that's got to be a huge disappointment for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to be out of this race. Teammates. Clint Boyer, runner-up in stage one, battling Suarez for seventh, Matt. Mike, remember on that stop, they reversed that chassis adjustment because the car was just too tight. They also pulled off a piece of tape because the temperatures were too high. Boyer just methodically trying to reel in car after car. You mentioned it. He's on the move, currently up to seventh, eight seconds behind the leader. And, and, man, and, and Mike as well, This the race is getting a pace that's pretty manageable now. Last time by 1565. You get up around 15 or 16 flat. That's a pace that you can uh, physically manage pretty well without wearing yourself out. So here's Jimmy Johnson, sixth place, eight seconds back. Got it the side of me. It got really loud in the car. I think we have the right side damage of some kind. Yeah, we got it behind the door, in front of the tire. I don't see any smoke. Gonna have to get some film. Oh, he definitely has damage. I don't know who he got into. You can see right there in front of the right rear. I mean, it's it's pushed in. So that 
obviously the crush panel or something has come loose right there allowing not just uh, the sound to come in but it's affecting the aerodynamics of that car too. Well that too and remember those fumes from that engine that's where the tailpipes are right there. That means he's getting some fumes and stuff inside the car. And remember, Mike, we've got that right side window now. There's no air going in the car anymore. You have to put, you have to duck it in there if you want it. So that's going to, that could affect him physically with that, uh, with those fumes coming up inside the car. Chase Elliott is hanging on to that last position on the lead lap, trying not to go a lap down to Joey Logano. We're under caution in Bristol, lap 213. Matt Tift went around. And look at this, right on the front straightaway. You can see coming off of turn four there, Chase Elliott gets to the rear bumper, Matt Tift. Tift looked a little loose Spins on four, and it looked like uh, that the nine car gave a little shove. Well, who gets the free pass? <laughs> Chase Elliott. <laughs> hmm. uh, huh. Go figure. <laughs> Pit rows open. They all stack up there at uh, at turn two, Matt. And Martin Truex Jr. looking to peel off to go into his pit box as he does. Truex chasing his first short track win in the Cup Series. His car generally has been on the tight side, been building tight, especially in the center when he tries to go cut. You can see the wedge wrench in the back window. Going to make an adjustment there. A little bit of trouble there on the left side, Jamie. Kyle Busch, seven-time winner here. Just feels like he's on top of the track. Overall grip issue, air pressure, and four tires. Regan. Brett Keselowski hits his pit stall. He felt like he was on the splitter for the first 40 to 50 laps of that run. He wants to get it off of the splitter. They're also going to put a small patch on the nose of that race car. Vince. Joey Logano pits from the lead, and he likes the car. He said it a little too free taken off, and then it builds tight. Not terrible, but it's something they're going to adjust on. Four tires for the 22 of Logano. All right, here's the race off pit road, sponsored by Simba Court. 
Logano holds on to the lead. Boy, so close, Mike. I didn't think he was going to hang on to the lead, the 22 car, but he did. Here's how close it was. Yeah, he comes out of here and he's uh, he was spinning his tires a little bit when he took off. So, oh, he's not going to make it, but you can see right there what a what a what a battle off pit road. And Brad Keselowski being on the kind of shorter side of coming off a of pit road was able to get that second place away from 18 of Kyle Busch. Now you see all that repair work being done to the right rear quarter panel of Jimmy Johnson's car. Larry? Yeah, they working on the aerodynamics, but also we mentioned the crush panel. Now let's go to our Ford Performance Cutaway car, and I'm going to show you where the crush panel is. It's located right inside the two rear wheel wells. This is it pretty much right there. It's just an aluminum piece, and it basically seals the body off to the cockpit of the driver because like you guys said he's going to get a lot of fumes inside that car especially at a short track like bristol and daryl you nailed it for the first time we're running that right side window and those fumes are just stay inside that race car this would be the crush panel you kind of see right back in there. It's made out of aluminum and it kind of seals the body to the entire cockpit. You've got one on the right rear. You've got one all the way over here on the left rear. And there's also two beside on the left and right side of the front firewall. All that's to seal the cockpit where no fumes get inside. Yeah, that kind of the only thing that worried me about that, Larry, was the exhaust come out right there and right in front of that crush panel, right in front of that uh, right rear tire. And with that right side window, no air going in there, those exhaust pipe right out next to the wall that could really blow a, get a lot of fumes up inside that car. We'll see if that affects Jimmy later in the race or not. Well we had some big news here on the Fox side this week from uh, Daryl Waltrip and reaction from drivers including our race leader Joey Logano. Yeah it's uh, I mean DW for for our sport was a, a huge made a huge impact as a driver for one um, and, and growing our sport you know for a long period of time, but he didn't stop there. And, and I think a lot of drivers do. And, and he took the ball and ran with it and took that, that uh, the fame, the personality, the, his power uh, to be able to, uh, you know, improve our sport and continue that from the broadcasting booth for, what, almost 20 years. So uh, congratulations. Thank you, uh, you know, because of pioneers like yourself uh, that grew our sport into what we see today. I get to race and I think that's really cool. So thank you very much. Well said Joey. What do you think? <laughs> Hold on for the first time ever since speechless. I've been in this booth in four years. DW speechless. Uh, we love you Daryl. Thanks. Love you buddy. It's, yep. been a th it's been a thrill ride. Yep. And it continues all through 2019. Oh yeah. Not done yet. Finish strong. That's my motto. Yes we will. 15 wave arounds. William Byron back on the lead lap. Along with Paul Menard and Chase Elliott was the free pass. So we're back under green. And some contact between Martin Truex Jr. Aggressive on this restart trying to get by Joey Logano. Driving away. Hit your mark, buddy. Boy, Keselowski in a little bit of trouble here. Dropping back into the clutches of Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer. Had some damage on the nose there. I don't know if it was from that one restart there behind the 13, but we had we got some holes in the nose. I got one of the holes fixed this time. Copy. Regan? Guys, you can see that patch on the right or left front corner of this race car. I asked the team if they knew when it happened. They really didn't know. They didn't feel like they hit debris. So a little bit of a mystery there, but they were able to spot that damage and fix it on that last stop. And we heard out of his teammate Joey Logano talking about his car is a little bit loose to start the race or to start a run. And, you know, Joey Logano is further up front. Here's where that damage came from on the two of Brad Keselowski run into the rear bumper of the 13 of Ty Dillon on a restart. Now that was two restarts ago that Keselowski got that damage. But I, I think the issues that Keselowski's having right now, his car just starts off loose. Now he's further back in traffic than his teammate Joey Logano, but I think he's ha he has a similar balance to his race car. Check out place on back. He's, over right there. Up, he's right up in there with the big boys. He's, he's mixing it up today. I like that. And you're riding with Harvick. Still now two laps down. He was one of those that took the wave around. I love this shot. I mean, this this is 
truly what it looks like when you're sitting in the driver's seat, Mike. That track is coming at you so fast, so fast and furious, man, and you're just eating it up. Ty Dillon, our stage one winner, currently 14th. Five seconds back, just ahead of Jimmy. Yeah, putting together a pretty nice race today. Five Besides, five it was five awesome five. to see him win that uh, stage, but uh, he's hanging in there tough still. Inside. Clear. Timmy oh, Hill's just taken his iridescent blue car behind the wall. I always felt like, Jeff, and I think you know, this track is an equalizer. It, some guys love it. Some guys, some guys have a knack for getting around this concrete place with the high banks. That's why we see guys have great runs here that we maybe don't see have great runs anywhere else. And 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 Matt DiBenedetto is one of my one of the guys I think that really excels at this racetrack. Now there's something about the feel of this racetrack. That's probably why you are so good here, Daryl. Is you, there's a balance that you're looking for. You're looking for that front end to cut at a certain place in the corner and the back. To, to rotate around it, and obviously Matt Benedetto has a great feel for this track. Teammates here are Hunt Brothers Pizza Cam and Kevin Harvick two laps down, letting Daniel Suarez go there. Well, such a tough place to be in when you're Kevin Harvick two laps down. You know there's other cars ahead of you that are one lap down, and yet you've got 269 laps to go. Yeah, but remember, Harvick at one time was four laps now. So he's already made up two laps and he's only two down now and he gets a wave around a free pass. Whatever. He ain't out of this thing. Here's Martin Truex in second. 1.2 back. Mike, I just I just think with the with the Martin Truex Jr. and Cole Pern, they're in culture shock. As soon as they get used to being over there at Gibbs with teammates, I think you'll see that 19 car run like that 78 car did. Check out Ryan Newman. Fourth place. A couple of tenths ahead of Kyle Busch. Right, Kozlowski four seconds back. He looked like he had his hands full on that restart, like the car was really bad loose, but then it tightened up and then he was able to start making some pretty good time. So not sure what was going on on the restart, but he uh, he's overcome it. Now in the early going, Kurt Busch had a horrible qualifying. He and his younger brother worked their way up through together up to the second caution period. The Bush brothers together have combined to win the last three races here and they have more victories than any pair of brothers ever to race at Bristol. Jamie. And before that last stop, Mike, Kurt Busch saying he didn't like the direction the car had gone. He said the front was just lazy, so they threw some adjustments at it, made a wedge adjustment in the left rear, air pressure and four tires. Kurt just told his team, a little bit better now, a little tighter, and he can run the bottom if needed. Second place, it's on Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex. A difference of lines. And a convergence on each straightaway. Yeah, <laughs> you're not going to see that. That 19 Truex, he likes that bottom. He's been there pretty much the whole race. The 12 has moved around a little bit. He seems to make a little better time up high. But like you said, Mike, one high, one low, and they come together on the straightaway. Right behind them, Ryan Newman, three seconds back, Vince. And Newman coming off his best finish of the season, 11th last week at Texas, had a top 10 here in this race last year and a strong showing early today. And give them credit, they had a big catch earlier when they felt a vibration, ended up being a loose wheel. So they were thankful to have caught that in time for Ryan Newman. He likes this six and it's inside the top five. Good day. Boy, we almost had this guy almost was ugly. The one and the 14 came together, and 14 almost spun out. Yeah, battling with Chris Busher, and Busher now eighth, having a great run here. But uh, that, yeah, Clint Boyer was in a tough spot. Boy, what a great job Chris Busher's doing here today at Bristol. This battle's heating up. Issue with the 19, it looks like Matt. And Jeff, he hit it back on lap 215. A lap ago, he keyed the mic and told Cole Pern, "I may have a loose wheel." They are ready for him if he does indeed need to hit pit road seven laps to the break. Tenth place. Dylan De Benedetto looking for some stage points. Six laps to go in stage two. Fourth place on the left. Tenth on the right. 
pretty much battles everywhere, Mike, for position. You know, we talk about the leader, a 22 card, way out there by himself, but everybody else is battling for position right now. You know, I mean, if you think about for Matt DiBenedetto, Austin Dillon, I mean, these stage points are huge for teams like that. So you know they're going to battle it out, and <laughs> uh, Suarez is going to come into the picture, and he's going to try to take some of those stage points away. Oh, they come right up on Truex down in the low groove Boy. and get past him without incident. Martin just trying to ride this out to the end of the stage, but they're battling all around him. Gonna have to decide, yeah. Boy, Pit Truex, will be closed so next time. He is barely even carrying any speed out there. I think he's coming. He's coming, yeah, he's coming in. This yeah, time. he's got no, no choice. And uh, Ricky Stenhouse back in the race after making that mechanical repair. Even though he's 100 laps back, he's out there logging laps. As we come toward the end of stage two. And for Joey Logano, this means 10 championship points, but most importantly, one playoff point that he will carry all the way to the penultimate round at Phoenix. You know, as crew chief Todd Gordon, you know what his middle name is? Bentley. Now, you would say he likes Bentley cars, right? Almost. What would, what would you Except say? Except I'm from New England, so <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bentley Warren. Great super modified ace. And Joey Logano has won stage two. I kind of like the last name of his, uh, of Todd, too. <laughs> Todd Gordon. Yeah. There's a few Gordons out there still. There's and the, there is the light, ooh. and it was on well before Martin so Truex close. got to pit road. Joey Logano, our defending Cup Series champion, is the winner of stage two, his third stage win of the year. Time I run good here. Is that frustrating? For you and me The hills surrounding Thunder Valley. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. There's Bristol Dragway on the lower right of the screen. And the car park and the world's great coliseum. As pit road opens at the end of stage two. Jamie. 
and the brothers Bush coming in together. The one of Kurt Bush says tighter that run, just wants a little more help with it. Air pressure in four. The 18, the younger brother, Kyle Bush, saying the front needs to be freer. And every time he gets those tires in the compound, it goes away. A four tire stop and chassis adjustment, Regan. Well, Brad Keselowski, the last stop was on the splitter too hard for the first 40 laps of the run. This time it was just the first few laps of the run. It takes him just a little bit to get going because of that, and then it won't turn and it jumps sideways after that. Vince? Well, and Keselowski's two teammates, Joey Logano on the right and Ryan Blaney on the left. You see the chassis adjustment for Blaney. Said he needs it to turn better on throttle. As far as Joey Logano is concerned, freer everywhere to start the run, but then it built tight, put a little tape on the front end of that 22, and Blaney gets him on pit road. Ryan Blaney back to the front. We say we dial up Joey Logano, see how he's doing out there. Hey, Joey Logano and CW, you got me there, buddy? I got the loud and clear. <laughs> hey, man, I held it together for three days, and uh, then I saw the interview you did. Thank you for those kind words. I, I really appreciate that. You've kind of got the field choked up here today as well. That car looks mighty fast. How's it feel out there? It's pretty quick. Uh, it seems like she runs really good there for uh, on the long haul as it keeps going, and the track rippers up a lot. Uh, pretty good out front there. So, um, working lap traffic tough, but uh, it's fun late lap. So, trying to catch you on um, lap sled here. I think you got like 10,000 lap sled here. So, I got a long ways to go, but we're making a run at it. Well, good luck, and uh, I won't be here to watch you, but I'll be watching from home later on this year. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, man. Appreciate everything you've done for our sport. We'll put out a good race for you here. Well, the stage two winner has won the last five races. Who started that streak? Joey Logano in Las Vegas.
So a quick recap of penalties. Martin Truex pitted while the pits were not open. He goes to the back. Jimmy Johnson too fast entering goes to the back and Daniel Suarez broke a wheel stud. They had to replace that. He was too fast exiting on his first. The 19. Uh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, 19. Truex broke a stud. Yeah. He'll have to go to the back. Loose wheel for Brad Keselowski. He had to come back in but uh, Timmy Hill's back in the race. Yeah. Other than that it was just a routine <laughs> pit stop. Yeah. All right. Here they come to the Geico restart zone for stage three. I really think by Trek staying out trying to extend it to the end of that stage is might cost him even more than it has already. Corner clear, clear, clear. Clear on half. Half bottom. By one, by two, by three, by three. Blaney steps out smartly with the lead. 18 cars on the lead lap. Six Eric cars. Jones, the free pass. Ryan Newman, I don't know if he got loose or got moved up the racetrack. I'll tell you one thing. That 37 car, guys, with Busher is running pretty good today. Oh, Chris Busher got a good shot at a top 10 today. Boy, he does. He's having a heck of a run. And Ryan Newman right with him, battling for a top five spot. I think Newman's influence with that team, uh, what he knows and what he brought to the table, I think we're seeing the results of that team at 16 getting better and better and better. And his perseverance. Oh, yes. wall, I think it was a 17 yeah. over there, guys. He, you know, he, his perseverance of just battling and fighting, talking about Ryan Newman, I mean, to me, that, that always gets him a few more positions. I agree. He never gives up. Well, closing in on them are Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott. Now, watch the red car. Daniel Suarez get way up the hill here. Ooh, yes, he did. Ooh, Ooh buddy. Yeah, boy, he's lucky not to get in the, uh, the right side into the wall. But you just can't go up top too early on these restarts. It's just not enough grip up there until more cars are running up there. I'm going to tell you something, guys. I don't know what they did to that nine car. They cooled it off, got his power steering fix or something, but the car that's on the move is Chase Elliott in that nine car. Let's see what he's made of today. Maybe he figured out how to drive it without power steering. <laughs> Vince? Yeah, exactly. A little bit of both of those things. Uh, they did take some more tape off of it, so that's keeping it a little cooler, which seems to be helping it. And Chase is kind of getting the rhythm now for how to drive it. Uh, with the power steering issue that he has. So uh, maybe it's going to be a good thing that there's so many laps if his arms stay Not attached. Debris back straight away. Yeah, I see it yeah, about right down the, the inside. quarter of the way down, Mike. Now we're going to watch Martin Truex cut down in front of Bubba Wallace. And is there anything missing off the back of that, that car? It says Toyota. Toyota, so I'm pretty sure it came off at Toyota. Here's Mark Trucks Jr. He gets loose off of turn four. Oh man, he's got a big run. It's going to go to the inside of Corey LaJoy, but cuts down right across the nose of the 43 of Bubba Wallace and pulls the back bumper cover off of or a piece of it anyway. I think everybody here today's got back bumper problems. <laughs> now we've got a number of drivers who've been trying to recover from being lapsed down. Eric Jones took two wave arounds and then a free pass to get back on the lead lap. But Bubba Wallace is one down. David Reagan is the free pass on this caution. But you got Kevin Harvick and Kyle Larson and Truex now two laps down. Michael McDowell and others down three. All trying to fight their way back and catch Ryan Blaney.
it shouldn't have. They're holding it. This fall, Fox becomes the new network home of WWE SmackDown Live every Friday night, beginning October 4th, only on Fox. WWE legend Bill Goldberg was here today doing the driver introductions. He's a big car guy. He's got a huge Mopar collection. Can't think of anybody better than Goldberg to do that here at Bristol. Absolutely. I wanted to know if I wanted to arm wrestle. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. Well, speaking of SmackDown, that's what's happened to Daniel Suarez here. They are caught for pitting outside the box. That is a one lap penalty. And this is just losing focus or get, letting frustration get the best of you. He was not battling anybody when he came down pit road and somehow went into the box and, and, and was pitted outside of it. Larry? Guys, this is not Daniel Suarez's fault. What they did is he was leaving and he crossed the front line the front tire carrier reached down there and pulled a piece of tape, ah. and he was outside the box. So this is not Suarez's fault. Ah. This is simply trying to pull a piece of tape with him across the front line. Yeah, that, that splitter and nose cannot break the plane of that Oops. line right there. Yeah. As Thanks, as Larry. Car started to move. He needed to step back. Back under green, the Penske teammates, Blaney and Logano, fighting with Clint Boyer, Kurt Busch, and Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch, what a, what a run he has had so far. Winner here last August. And he's right here, buddy. I mean, he's got a car that's capable of getting up here and leading this thing, looks like. I love Kurt. I, Kurt Busch is so methodical the way he goes about explaining his car, breaking down a track, breaking down a turn. Sharp kid when it comes setting up that race car. Great battle up front here for the lead between the 22 of Lagan and the 14 of Clint Boyer. Both of these, to me, these have been the best two cars other than Ryan. Sorry, that's for second place. Other than Ryan Blaney, you know, I think these two guys are also the best cars out there. And at the tail end of this group, the nine of our pole sitter Chase Elliott and Chris Bush are coming into play here. I tell you, that 37 car, <laughs> I am impressed. Busher has just been on. He's been on it all the way to this point. Boy, if Chase Elliott gets the measure of Kyle Busch here, that'll show us something. And again, the nine car, I mean, look at what we thought he was going to be in trouble. Maybe he wouldn't even finish this race. Now he's up here fighting, trying to get back to the lead. Okay. It's just how this race goes, Mike. It evolves. It starts off and you get in trouble. You got a lot of time here to get back in the race, and that's what these guys have been able to do, several of them. It's all right there. Kyle Busch make one of those classic aggressive moves that he makes diving down right in front of the 37 of Chris Buescher. You know, he does that so well, and I think it's so unexpected. He can do things with a race car that other guys don't expect you to do, and he gets away with it. Newman realized 18 of Kyle Busch had a run, it's gonna give way, but he's gonna hold steady on that outside. No, wait Dude, a minute. You, the use, way you know Newman does. You used Newman and give way in the same <laughs> sentence. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> well, I meant open up the door. And I like him. I tell you, Ryan Newman, nobody drives harder than Ryan Newman. No doubt about it. You're pulling ahead, clear, clear, clear. Stay inside with you. Stay inside with you. And, and he inside. has, inside. he has this reputation of being really hard to pass, but he'll be the first one to tell you and defend, hey, I just race hard every single lap. No, you know what he says? I worry about myself. I don't, you know, I don't worry about what you need or what you want me to do. I worry about myself. And one thing's for sure, he's consistent. Oh, yeah. He treats everybody the same. Walk in the park for Ryan Blaney. He's opened up a second on his teammate Joey Logano. 214 to go here. Blaney led 100 laps here last year. Back at 12th place on uh, the left of your screen, Keslowski and Hamlin. So, Darrell, what are you racing for here when you already have two wins this year, as both these drivers do? You're locked into the playoffs. What are you working on? Three wins. <laughs> <laughs> why yeah. Why do I even <laughs> ask? No, Mike, I don't care what, I mean, how many wins you got or how many points you got, you want to win this race. Look, this is Bristol, baby. That's right. You want to win this thing. 
Well, and Brad Keselowski, I believe he's got a car capable of winning this race, but he just keeps having all these little issues, whether it's on a restart, whether it's a loose wheel, but just keep putting him further back, making it harder for him to find that number one spot. Now the free pass position right now is Bubba Wallace. He and Daniel Suarez are the only cars one lap down. Harvick is two down, as is Truex. Bowman and McDowell three down. And, and Larson right, is two down. Right now, right along here, there's a there's a couple of hundred laps to go, and you start to you're doing a little planning right here at this point in the race. You want to have a little something left for the end. You don't want to use it all up right now, but uh, this is when you're thinking about getting through these next hundred laps. You want to try to get through these next hundred laps without any trouble. There's our credit one camera riding along with Kyle Larson. Who's had a bit of a rough day two laps down currently. With Harvick in front of him and then Wallace and Suarez one lap down for the free pass. Yeah, it's just not a, a Kyle Larson s day so far here at Bristol. We have seen him dominate this race and work traffic and just do some amazing things here and come so close to winning this race. But today I can't think of a whole lot that's gone his way. No, it just seems out of rhythm. It just hadn't been able to get that rhythm, the, that high line he likes to run. It just doesn't seem to be in sync with everything. Well, he's had just one top 10 finish this year and they had this place circled. I mean, Larson finished second in both races here last year. Ninth place. Austin Dillon and Matt DiBenedetto. Ryan Blaney out in front at Bristol. There's the battle for the lead in Bristol with 192 laps to go in the Food City 500. Ryan Blaney out in front of Joey Logano, and they are that close. 
as they battle for the front spot. Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. Jeff. Well, you can very easily say that Bristol is Ryan Blaney's favorite racetrack. He's led more laps here than any other track uh, He for, for himself. He also uh, is winless in 2019 so far. But today when he leaves here, I think he's going to have a win at Bristol. Well, and Jeff, it's Kurt Busch's favorite racetrack, too. Now, he has six wins here, including last August, and he's been solid in this one car, but he has had to work hard today, starting back in the 27th position. He may not win this thing, but I think he's going to be fun to watch these last 170-something laps. Joey Logano said so many nice things about me. How am I not going to pick him to win this race? He was the last Penske driver to win here August 2015. Today, the 22 car, and I'm going to go give him a hug in Victory Circle. Well, DW two years ago, the 14 of Clint Boyer nearly won here, finishing second. They adjusted the car to be better on the front half of the run. It swung to the tight side. He's moved up top. He's one adjustment away from being up there with Blaney. Chase Elliott started on pole, was third here last August, and his best buddy Blaney might win this. But to see Chase wrestle that car with no power steering, and when we started this report, he was the fastest car on the racetrack. That's your Credit One Bank ones to watch. That's that battle for the lead has not changed. Jeff, you and I are having a heck of a battle We're here. Have <laughs> one heck of a yeah. battle. And, 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 you know, I do think Joe Logano has the better race car, but Ryan Blaney has been working every single line that he possibly can to try to find a little bit more out of this 12 car, or maybe search for what he's going to need to adjust for the remainder of this race. Yeah, I, I think I've been watching that 12 car all the, the whole race. His car is equal to the 22. I think they're very close together, but it's going to be who gets through traffic or who makes the right call on pit road. I just think, you know, I think Ryan Blaney is destined. He's led a bunch of laps so far here in 2019. Uh, he's led a bunch of laps here in the past. I, I just think his time is coming. We've seen those other two Penske drivers win this year. I think he's ready to add his name to that list. Well, remember what I told you. He has those Jeff Gordon good looks like a movie star <laughs> and he's got a lot of talent and he's driving a fast car. So today could be his day. Let's break this up with a quick word from Duracell. <laughs> this is the number one trusted brand. 181 to go. And the lead is just that close. Clint Boyer's a second back. The Bush brothers and Chase Elliott within striking distance. And Eric Jones on pit road unexpectedly peeled off from turns three and four, and they're waiting for him. Let me guess a loose wheel. Riggin? Well, he just screamed on the radio. He's got a pit. He didn't say what it was yet, but he hit pit road almost immediately for right side tires. Remember, he had that loose wheel earlier in the race. They battled back nicely from that. One of his favorite racetracks. And this is the second time today he's been knocked off the lead lap for one reason or another. And Mike, don't think back too far, but remember we went to the new air guns and everybody complained about the guns. They got those fixed. Part, pit stops were around 14 seconds. That was pretty quick at one time. We're back down to doing pit stops the same speed we did before we went through air guns and every and and one, and last guy and part, and one last guy and everything else. They're back doing 12 second pit stops again. Chris Buescher having a great day, eighth place. Third among the Chevrolets. And up front, Blaney and Logano continue to go at it, Vince. Well, maybe the difference between the two right now is that Logano has been running the bottom and the top. It seems like his car is a little more versatile right now. And the spotter for uh, Ryan Blaney, Josh Williams, told Blaney that Logano's picking up the gas a little sooner and also keeping Blaney abreast on how Joey's turning down off the corner. And Blaney simply told him, I just can't get my car to do that. I actually think that uh, the 12 car found a little rhythm uh, running right up next to the wall, which makes me nervous because when you're that close to the wall, you can just slip and you're going to get into it. But he seems to find a little speed up high. Well, and I, I think that's where he wants to run. He wants to run up high, but he sees Logano being able to run the bottom, run the top. And also he's just trying to pick and choose how he gets through lap traffic. I think he, he just needs another adjustment or two for that top groove to be 
you know, the, the, the fast lane for him. Well, these two keep fooling around trying to lap Bubba Wallace. Clint Boyer's going to be right on top of them. <laughs> yeah, look, who, look who's joined the party. I mean, he's here and he's running that bottom line and running pretty there effectively, is. too. And the one thing that's completely different about Boyer, he doesn't get off of the bottom groove. He is down there working it. His car is so strong down there. Call him catfish, if you will. <laughs> Matt. And you can see Boyer has moved to the bottom at both ends of the racetrack. The car is there. DW, you mentioned that Todd Gordon's middle name was Bentley. There's a reason for that. Back in the early 60s, his mom and dad, Jim and Donna, they were weekly regulars at Oswego. They would roll pennies to turn them in at the ticket window. When 1969 rolled around and Todd was born, they couldn't think of any better name. Todd Bentley Gordon for two of the Mount Rushmore of super modified drivers, Todd Gibson and Bentley Warren. Oh, you're right, man. Uh, they, they, I, his mom, I talked to his mom, and he, she told me the whole story, and I was so impressed. He's a great racer. He's won a lot of races in his career as a driver. Trying to win another one as a crew chief here. Going to have to beat his teammate to do it. And everybody else. Back single file, little traffic ahead. Paul Menard, 167 to go in Bristol. One fifty-six to go at Bristol. Ryan Blaney still leading, and we talk about this being Daryl's house, and here's why. Look at that. Over that stretch of nearly eight seasons, average finish one point five. How is it, that? Blows my mind, Daryl. That is, I mean, just just to run around here and compete, uh, complete every lap, let alone to have a one point five average finish. I think that was a thing that, uh, listen, I just was a driver, had great cars, great teams, but. When you win seven races in a row, that's 3,500 laps. Wow. That you didn't have a problem. That's pretty hard to do at this that joint. Is. I think Boyer might get to second place here on Joey Logano. Oh, Landon Castle, though, unfortunately, that oh, might hurt Clint Boyer. Yeah, he's in Boyer's lane. Oh, yeah, 
What what is the protocol for lapped cars? Do you want them up top? Do you want them on the bottom? Or do you just want them out of the way? I no. just want to know where they're going to go. Right. No, always hold your line. Wherever you're running, stay there. Let me decide which way I want to go. You just stay where you were, and I'll figure it out. We told them in drivers, man, that's why we always hold your line. If you get caught in the middle, hold the middle. Quinn Half on the inside. And the three leaders ready to battle again and get a little bit of clear track here. Mike, it's, it's, it's a pretty good pace. We're still running pretty fast speeds around here. 1565 last time by. Uh, track record about a second quicker than that. So you haven't slowed down, slowed down a lot, but that's a manageable speed. 15, 60, 70, 80, right in there, high 15s. Uh, you're not stressing yourself out so bad at these speeds. We're catching William Byron, who is the last car on the lead lap in 15. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson, his teammate just ahead of him. Remember, he had that issue on pit road and he's just not been able to, to show the speed and, and work his way back up to the front like he did previously. So Mike, what, what's the cars that come off current? 22 down on the bottom, shortest way around. He closes all the way up to the side of the 12. 12 high, got that momentum. Shoots down the straightaway. Logano back to the bottom, pulls up beside of him. Can't get by him. And that time Boyer went to the highest side in one and two, and he gained on Logano in the back stretch. Side by side again for the lead. Well, one of the, you know, now Boyer's watching what's going on between these two. I think there's going to be the move. Oh, right there. He slides up in front of him. Blaney said, let me see if let me show you how that works. <laughs> Blaney's car is just not as good around the bottom as Joey Logano's, but now the 24 William Byron, is that going to hold up the 22? No. I tell you guys watching a great race right now is Clint Boyer. <laughs> He's sitting there with these two guys go at each other. Pretty interesting. Well, he wants to be a part of it, so he's going after Ryan Blaney. Right in the middle of it. Oh, Boyer had a little bobble right there as he landed into the corner one and two. Yeah, I see that every now and then out of the 14 car. He'll lose, it. He'll lose it just a little bit, but, boy, he gets right back after it. Well, there's just no way you can run the bottom this late into a run and roll through there as good as his car has been without that car being a little bit free. So he probably just fed a little bit too much of the wheel. Oh! <laughs> He could not clear Blaney that time, and now Blaney to the bottom in third. But, Mike, the other thing I see, this 22 car, Joy Logano gets in the lead. His lap times, he picked up about two tenths once he cleared uh, Ryan Blaney and was able to get in the lead with clean air and run his own Car in the wall, turn two. Oh, hard lick. Took a big hit. That's David Reagan. And he looks like he'll make it to pit road, and we can stay green. No debris. This is the only place where you, oh, please let there be a caution so I can catch my breath. Oh, heavy damage. That's got to be a, a right front tire, I would guess. He will make it to pit road. No caution. He was 15th. And, and, and this is the thing. When you're running this close to the wall, it's so easy to brush that wall, push that fender in on the tire, and have an issue like David Reagan had. And, and one thing I noticed, the way the front splitter is on these cars, if you make contact with the left rear with that splitter, it's going to cut that tire down. The splitter's sticking out like a knife. How about the Bush brothers? Fourth place and catching Ryan Blaney. Jamie. Well, both brothers, the one and the 18, both saying their cars are a little bit tighter, but Kyle just not happy with it. He's been watching this battle up ahead of him, and he said he just needs help. He's been feeling like he's out of the track, just lacking grip. But Kurt on the outside in the one saying now that he's tight, the car has just been much better since the first half of the race. All right, Ryan Blaney dropping back a little bit. Here's his radio. Call him about the turn down lane for me, please. When the turn 22 runs off and turns down, he carries less speed to the center and turns back down. So by six, run into the one, doing the same thing. I need to know that like 50 laps ago. Man, you hear that out of breath, breathing hard, fighting that car, trying to run fast laps, somebody breathing down your back. And it makes me get, it gives me a headache. And look at this. Quinn Hoff on the inside, Jimmy Johnson trying to stay on the lead lap. Rookie Matt tipped yeah. up top, and Boyer wanting the lead from Logano. You know, a guy, it, I, I know he's two laps down, but he's trying to get one of them back. That four car of Kevin Harvick, he's stalking these leaders right now. He gets by them, he's one lap down, he gets a free pass. Four cars back in the race. Well, we saw. 
Kevin Harvick in practice, he dominated our sheet on the average of 10, 15, and 20 lap runs. So we know he's got a fast race car. It, it may take you all day to get back on the lead lap. It may take you all day to overcome a mistake, but you've got all day to do it. Well, you can see Joey Logano has now moved down to that bottom groove, trying to uh, take advantage of what Clint Boyer's been doing. And the four car goes three wide to the outside of Clint Boyer. He wants to get one of those laps back, DW. Uh, you know why that happened, don't you? They're teammates. And the 15 of Ross Chastain on fresher tires also goes by Boyer. As it continues to unfold with Joey Logano in the lead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just as Clint Boyer took the lead, debris in turn number two, and uh, Kevin Harvick slowed suddenly there. And here's Boyer taking the lead from Joey Logano. See that green and white car? Oh, yeah. Kevin Harvick gets into the wall. I'm pretty sure that's a tire down. The 14 goes by the 22, and the caution comes out. Yeah. Riding with Logano. I mean, Harvick was driving the, I was driving the wheels off that thing, and literally, I mean that literally. So there is the call. light. That's what you call good timing. With Boyer in the lead. And Harvick unable to capitalize. The caution, though, is for debris. Uh, William Byron gets the free pass. Pit road is open, and that was the longest green flag run of the day, 25 and a half minutes. We were about 20 laps away from green flag stops, but now they can pit under caution, Matt. And everyone noticed how the four car of Harvick came on. Bugger Ravage told Boyer that they made an air pressure change in the right rear of the four, and that helped. So they did that to the 14 car, a chassis adjustment as well. Boyer thinks that they're there with his car. He needs away, Jamie. Bush a little bit tight there. He said, just leave it alone. So a minor, minor air pressure adjustment on the left side tires. On the right side, Kyle Bush said he got really tight in the center racing those guys. He's thirsty, needed Gatorade and ice and four tires. Regan? Brad Keselowski with a nice recovery so far after that penalty for a, or after that stop for a loose wheel on lap 259. He's back up to seventh with a tight race car behind other cars. 
very strong on the long run, though, Vince. The 22 of Joey Logano pitting from second, just too tight. Four tires and an air pressure change. Loose in for the 12, but he can't get the front end to turn the way he likes. And a wedge adjustment on that 12 for Blaney to help him out. Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Logano, Blaney, and Kurt Busch, and Chris Buescher lead them off pit road. We're under caution with 122 to go in Thunder Valley. I love bowling. Get ready to roll with the inaugural PBA playoffs on FS1 Knockdown Mondays. A head to head bracket style battle for $100,000 begins tomorrow, 7 Eastern, on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Clint Boyer outside, Kyle Bush inside, then Blaney Logano, Busher and Bush, Newman, Keslowski, Hamlin, Dillon. Here we go. Boyer can't get clear of the 18. Well, we saw where Clint Boyer lost the lead to Ty Dillon earlier when he chose the inside. This time he chooses the outside and loses the lead to the 18 to Kyle Busch. His car is just so good on the long run, but it takes a few laps for it to get going. Talking about Clint Boyer. Yeah, Boyer's that way. I think the 12's that way a little bit too. He seems to be he seems to be pretty good on a short run, fades a little bit on the longer run, but here we are with Kyle Busch leading this race late. Uh, that could be trouble for everybody. Yeah, that's the last thing any of these competitors wanted to see. Chris Busher fighting the August winner, Kurt Busch, fifth place. Busher has a top five here. Yeah, so you know he likes this place, but hats off to that race team. I mean, they have kept him in the game. Good race car. He's done an awesome job maintaining just like he is on these restarts side by side with Kurt Busch and great job in the pits by that pit crew too. And Jeff just before that caution came out that was a we ran 25 and a half minutes of green flag racing. Can you imagine getting on a, a bicycle or a, a, an air down or anything and, and hustling it for 25 and a half minutes. I and mean, these guys are going around in circles. This place is just so tough. A lot of these guys I'd like to see these guys tomorrow when they wake up I guarantee you, their right shoulder 
It's about to fall off right now. I don't know if they'll wake up. They might come too. <laughs> <laughs> Ninth place, Kozlowski trying to take it away from Newman here. Mike, one time I was racing here and I was leading the race. My left, my right leg, my gas leg got a cramp in it. So I had to stretch that right leg out and use my left foot to gas the car wow. until I could get the cramp worked out of my leg. That's how this joint affects you. 10th, 11th, 12th, three wide into the corner behind them. Man, there's, there is so much going on at this racetrack with 110 laps to go. Darrell, now I know how you won so many races here. If you could drive this place with your left foot, <laughs> you got some talent there, boy. <laughs> I didn't say whether I was leading or not. <laughs> no, it's a, you weren't in many races I have here. You have a lot of experiences, not all of them good. Kyle Busch out in front for the first time today. And, and I've been a little bit surprised to hear some of the reports about him talking about his cars up out of the racetrack uh, in practice. And we spoke to him after practice yesterday. He was very happy with the 18 car, and he really thought he had a, had a shot at winning this race. Well, this is a heck of a battle right here for ninth spot. Brian Newman, Keselowski, and got Jimmy Johnson here lurking, kind of see what's going to happen. That Newman's had a good run today, guys. He's been in a hunt. Andy Benedetto's right with uh, this group. You know what we haven't done yet today? I know what we, we haven't, haven't done. We haven't cranked it up, have we? We're about to. All right. Let her rip. Ninety-eight laps to go in Bristol. Kyle Busch, your Toyota top performer, he's been in the lead for the last twenty laps. Denny Hamlin in seventh. Matt Di Benedetto. Well, I don't know. Sorry, Mike. I just don't know how long that lead's going to last for Kyle Busch. That seems like as this run goes on, he's starting to fade a little bit. Yeah, and, and, and that for a Boyer car, we've seen that time and time again. He gets better and better as the run goes on. But Mike, you know how I know there's only ninety-six laps to go. They're running the fastest laps I think they've run all day. We're running 1508, 1507, 1503. Those are just off our qualifying speeds. This battle for the lead continues between Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, and Joey Logano. You'll see it all as we go double wide.
18 for the hell out of his car. He's going to hold it. Lock it down, get it rolling here, get it rolling. Leaders are going to be coming, get it rolling, get it rolling, get it rolling. Kyle Larson and William Byron's bad day just got worse. We're under caution at lap 415 as these two tangle in turn two. You know what they have in common, Mike? Their number. So Kyle Larson comes up in the rear bumper of the 52 of Curry, gets in the back of him. Larson gets loose up the oh. track, squeezes William Byron into the wall. 2-4, four, 4-2. Four, well, it all adds up to going. zero right now. <laughs> you wonder where I'm going to. I knew where you're going. <laughs> well, Mike didn't say anything. He's like, well, maybe he didn't get it. Outside, 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 outside. Lock it down, lock it down. Get it rolling here. Get it rolling. Leaders are going to be coming. Get it rolling. Get it rolling. Get it rolling. Cover for William Byron. He had just got back on the lead lap. And this happened to Kyle Bush while we were in break. He did lose the lead, but it doesn't look like any big damage. I don't think so, Mike. He's, he, he lost the lead. I think he backed off a little bit for a lap or two, and he felt like everything was okay, and he got back after it. But uh, going to come in and work on a little done. bit. Free pass, yeah, Daniel they, Suarez. They should come here, guys. 32 laps on the tires, and we got 80-something to go. Four tires, Matt, I would say for everybody. And four tires, Larry Mack. They've pumped up the air pressure. Russell Simpson, the tire specials, made the adjustment for the short run. 35 laps on that run. Jimmy Boyer said the car was a little bit tight, and then it really came in. Kurt Busch, the one car a little bit loose. 18 of Kyle Busch. That worked out nicely for him after getting into the wall. They were able to assess that damage. They're using those code words, Regan. Brad Keselowski hits his pit stall. He brushed the wall around lap 400. He's been asking what the 14 car was doing for lines. Just a little bit tight with that race car still right now. Vince? Joey Logano in that 22 car. He's led over 130 laps today. Snug in the center, but he can't afford it to be any freer because of his entry. As far as Ryan Blaney, he still won't turn the way he'd like. They're going to go back on the changes they made on the last stop. Strategy for Denny Hamlet, a two-tire stop. Gets him out first in front of Kyle Busch, Boyer, and Logano. He stayed out earlier, Hamlin did, with no tires. It don't work out so good. We'll see how two does. 83 laps to go. Let's check with Shannon in the studio. Hey there, Mike. 19 lead changes so far in this race, and something tells me we haven't seen the end of it. Who are you looking at right now, Mikey? Well, I love that strategy play there by Denny Hamlin, but Clint Boyer, I think he closed this race today, Jamie. The reason why I say that, he drove for MWR back in the day, and he just had a knack of making the bottom of this racetrack work better than any other competitor. I think that versatility in his car is going to make him my pick to win this race. Well, I'm going to disagree with Michael. I'm going to take <laughs> Joey Logano because we've seen Clint's car move around a little bit. He has been able to make the bottom work, but Joey's car looks 
very stable. He's not having the moments that some of the other guys are. And I think if it runs out, Joey Logano will be our guy. You picked a Penske racing driver. Went out on a limb there, yep. didn't you? Yeah, I was going to go with the Gibbs guy, but I went with Penske Shannon. What do you think about the way this race has opened up with the multiple lanes? I think we've seen some great racing. Yeah, I think the, the track actually looks comparable on the top or the bottom. The guys kind of fight for the bottom at the beginning. And then at the end of a run, it seems like they go to the top. But you can make passes on the bottom. So I think the track did a really good job of balancing out both groups. I just like watching all the action, whether they're battling for the lead or back for 10th or 12th. They're three wide. There's all kinds of excitement. A lot of great racing, like you said, Shane. How many more lead changes do you think we see before the end of well, this? Who knows? I, with, with what happened at the beginning of the race, it was hard crazy. To tell. Yeah, it was crazy. And it's actually, like we said, it's been really good racing. Um, and it just depends on the restart. Kyle Busch kind of got out uh, at, the, at this last one, but then faded a little bit, stepped over the line, got into the wall. Uh, so you don't know. And you know, the strategy, if we get another caution, these guys are going to be able to stay out, take two tires, keep watching for these guys to make decisions on pit road that could change the outcome. We've got a couple of guys up in the booth who know what it takes to get to victory lane here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Back to you guys. Thanks, Shannon. Let's uh, catch you up on what's happened here today so far. And it started right out. Darrell Waltrip waved the green flag. Uh, Kevin Harvick, after pay failing pre-race inspection, had to start at the tail end and make a pass-through penalty under green. There's the green flag and the famous command. Oh, it's so fun. And on round lap one, that was in the back, up at the front. It was Byron and Almarola who came behind the wall to fix the car. That's a no-no when you're under the damaged vehicle policy. Almarola out of the race. Uncontrolled tire there. And Ty Dillon ekes out a win, his first stage win of 2019. Joey Logano takes command. And he's the winner of stage two. And now we're going to have at least one lead change because Denny Hamlin has to give up the lead too fast, entering his pit, his third speeding penalty of the season. You know what that means? He's going to win. Oh. <laughs> he, he, how many times have we seen Denny Hamlin win when he has a penalty? I know it's a little bit late. I doubt he recovers from this one. No, not today. But uh, we have seen him come back and win from those penalties. Well, let's update the Coca-Cola family of drivers. See how they're faring with 80 laps to go. Joey Logano third, Ryan Newman sixth, Austin Dillon 13th. Daniel Suarez gets the free pass, so he's back on the lead lap. Denny Hamlin will restart 15th. Larson and Bubba Wallace lap down. So Denny Hamlin hates he got that speeding penalty, but another driver that hates he got it was Joey Logano in the 22 car. T.J. Majors, his spotter, was counting cars, and he slowed up to let Boyer beat him off pit road. That way he could restart fourth on the outside, but now he's third on the inside. Coming green this time, and the sun has poked through here in Bristol on what's been a very cloudy day. We'll see how that changes things as Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer will lead them to green. It'll be 78 laps to go. Oh, Boyer got, he didn't take off at all. But boy, Kyle Busch did. Kyle Busch, so did, uh, so did Kislowski. Got a great start, but Kyle Busch, he shot out the lead in a hurry. Boyer's, I mean, Boyer's out of control oh, man, right he's now. Loose. That's right, he was trying to make up for that start, and I think he overdid it. Gotta calm down, settle down, get back in your rhythm. Logano jumps to third, and Blaney trying for fifth here. Boy, that bottom. It, it, some guys can run that bottom, make it work, but if, if your car's not good on the bottom you, and you try to run it, you're going to lose a lot of time. Yeah, we've seen with Ryan Newman all day long really can't hold that bottom. He's got to run about a half a lane up. Now he goes almost all the way to the top to try to build those air pressures up the tires. William Byron brushed the wall, but continues. Chase Elliott up for seventh on the outside. Ian Busher continue to battle. Matt. And a great run going by the 37 of Busher. Three stops ago, they made an adjustment, and the car really came to life on the long run. The last stop. They didn't make any adjustment. And then the most earliest stop here, they made a slight air pressure adjustment, Mike, because they were losing the nose. Great stops all day by the Hendrick pit crew that they get with their alliance with Hendrick Motorsports. Those young athletes have performed flawlessly today. 
I know I heard the brand Dar Brad Darty say many a times we have made some big investments in these race teams this year. We want to see some results. Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. bumper tag. Whoa, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> Poking the bear right there. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea. Just looks like Ryan Blaney, you know, they've made some adjustments. I think his car's a little bit better on the longer run. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, I'm just telling you, he's trying to get by. But he's trying to get by, but he's going at it all the wrong ways. Uh, if Ryan Blaney had been listening to us just a, a few minutes ago, he'd have told you, Ryan Newman, he does not give an inch. <laughs> no. So he got a tire rub? He has some damage. I think the right yeah. front of oh, yeah. the nine of, of Chase Elliott got into that left rear. And now Newman has a rub on that left rear. He's going to have to come to yeah, pit road. Car to wall, turn one. Not going to end well. It's Boyer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Boyer. What happened to him? Oh, and the nine car just went up the hill. I believe Boyer may have cut a tire going into turn one. The car but, shot but the to nine, the wall. And nine just went right behind him and went right straight up yeah, the wall. Yeah, but that might have been from that rub from the right front fender. When he got in the left rear of the six car, might have caused some damage to the nine car. Gosh. Here's the 14. Oh, you can see the right front yeah, tire already down, down already. on the 14. You can see that going into the corner. And then right behind him, here comes the nine. Now, I just wonder, did the 14 of Boyer make contact with somebody on that restart? That sometimes can cause that right front to go down. So the nine had already made contact with the left rear of the six of Newman when Newman and the uh, Ryan Blaney car of the 12 got together. I think that was, is what caused the right front yeah. to go down on the nine. I don't, I don't know if Kurt Busch got in the back of the nine car. They were real close together, but he certainly shot up the hill. Matt? Boyer didn't mention names, but he was very vocal on the team radio about the fact that that individual cut down on me, which then the cosmetic damage to the fender cut in on the tire and a flat. Well, let's go back to Ryan Blaney and Ryan Newman, who share not only a first name, but the same inches of asphalt here. Yeah, and, and the 12 of Blaney just wasn't quite clear here. He tries to push the issue. Cuts in front of the, the six, and right there you yeah, see yeah. the nine gets into the left rear of the six of Newman and cause that damage. Yeah. That's where, that's where the six yeah. definitely got his damage, and the nine. Let's see what happens here with the 14 now. Now, is this where there was possibly some contact? Yeah, the 22 and the 14 make a little contact there. Pretty Look how it pushed that fender in. Pretty sure that's what caused his damage. But the 22 never, I mean, 22's on the wall. Oh, it happened right away. Look at that. Immediately yeah. that right front tire remember, went down. Remember what I told you about that splitter? That splitter sticks out there like a knife. You can see it a little bit on the front of Boyer's car right there where that splitter is. You can see it on the front of the 22 car. That thing is sticking out there pretty good ways. All right, here's some radio traffic from Chase Elliott's team. What happened? The six is on the racetrack, is what happened. Yeah, that flat right front, right front killed. I don't know if I could blame that one on Ryan Newman, eh. but uh, it's just, it's that, these two guys, remember, they got a little bit of history of racing hard with one another. Something good finally happened to the 42. He gets the free pass, Kyle Larson. Good for him. 65 laps to go. So oh, it's going to get it good. There's plenty it's, of racing hey, left. It's going to get And the sun's good. coming out, DW. <laughs> Larry, we've got bright sun all over this racetrack right now. I know it's concrete. It's not as sensitive to sunshine as an asphalt racetrack, but what does it do? Well, it, it's definitely going to take some grip away from the racetrack. And, you know, Mike, you had told me that in commercial break a little bit ago, and I got word basically from Vince that Ryan Blaney had made some, they had made air pressures and wedge adjustments to that 12 car. And I just wonder if the track went through a change and didn't complement the adjustments they made. Well, I, I would also add to that, Larry, that I believe what that's going to do is make his car a little bit looser at the beginning of the run. But watch out if he gets to a long run. 64 laps to go here in Bristol, and then coming up next, NHRA Drag Racing. Four wide's a big deal there. 
Okay. It is here, too. It is. It doesn't work here. Works good there, <laughs> but not so good here. But you know what, Mike? This is such a great caution. This is a, such a timely caution for these drivers. You've been out here all afternoon. You're pretty tired. Just gives you a chance to sit up in that seat. Tighten those belts up like Larry says. Get you something a little cool to drink here. Maybe you meet a few Skittles. Get you a little shot and, and, and get up here and get on the wheel and get it done. Well, you better because it, the intensity is only getting ready to ramp up even more. Pole sitter's back in, Chase Elliott. Vince. You know, one of the keys for Ryan Blaney and you guys were talking about the adjustments and they actually went back on that wedge and air pressure adjustment the previous time. And it's interesting because crew chief Jeremy Bullens has been asking Ryan, are we on the splitter? Are we on the splitter? The answer was always no until the answer was yes, we are on the splitter now. So that was his sign to go back on the adjustments and they feel like they're real close to that sweet spot now. We'll find out. He will restart fourth behind Kyle Busch and his Penske teammates Keslowski and Logano. Yeah, so what happens is on these restarts the drivers are driving in the corner as deep as they could possibly do it and that tire if it has less air pressure it's going to compress and that's going to cause that car to travel and that splitter and these are big splitters remember this year it's a bigger flatter wider splitter if it makes contact it has a much bigger effect on the handling of the cars. And just something to consider I just told you the speeds ramped up. So you're driving the corner harder. You're back in the you're, you're you're sinking the car into the track a lot more than you were maybe earlier in the race. So if it was close, it could be hitting them. Brian Newman goes to the back. Improper fueling on his number six Ford. I, I might be a little nervous if I'm Ryan Newman. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm Ryan Blaney right now. If I come up on that number six car, it'll be 61 laps to go. Kyle Busch powers off turn four with Blaney right behind him. Blaney gets loose going into one. Yeah, he got a little loose sideways, but he's recovered nicely. One of the things I've always wanted to know, oh, Kyle Busch gets a little bit loose, but I always wanted to know what Kyle Busch does inside that car. He can launch from a slow start like that on these restarts better than anybody I've ever seen. Look at that. Two, 12, and 22. The three Penske cars, the Fords, Chasing that Toyota. And I believe if we get a long enough run here, which, you know, we've got 60 laps to go, so plenty of laps. If this thing goes green here for a while, I believe advantage to those Penske Fords. But the 18 just, he's good. I just don't know if he's good enough on the long run. Think about Keselowski. I mean, I don't know that we've talked about him a lot today, but he has got the maybe the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Yeah, and the 18 of Kyle Busch had a pretty big moment off of turn two there, lost a lot of speed. Daniel Suarez just put the bumper to Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, look at you know, Keselowski is all over the back end of that 18 car for the lead. Yeah. So there, Joey, turn it down. Oh, nice, to, nice exit, nice exit quarter, by the two car up, off of turn down. four. Running the bottom. Still there. Quarter, 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 quarter. Still nice there, Joey, job. By one behind him. Kyle Busch maintaining his, he's driving the wheels out that thing to try to maintain that outside lane and momentum. And it might when you're on the inside like that, it's inch by inch. You just, this corner get a little further ahead. This corner get a little further ahead. Pretty soon I clear him. If this keeps up, Daryl. The eight wheels are going to start cornering better than <laughs> yeah, four. they will. Interesting move by the 18 of Kyle Busch. Not going to work out for him, but he tried to side draft that two car to try to keep him from getting by him. Now that's going to open up the door for the 22 of Logano. Yeah, he got down on the door, but he just wait, 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 can't wait. do that here. 18 got down the door, the yeah. two. It just doesn't work here. First Chevrolet in the race remains Chris Buescher in fifth place. Kurt Busch behind him. Two bow ties, fifth and sixth. Then De Benedetto, Suarez, Hamlin, and Johnson, the top ten. But look at that, Mike. You, you got Busher. You got De Benedetto. You got some guys up there we don't talk about every week, and they're having great runs today. A lot of the expected favorites having trouble. Ten caution flags, including the two stage ends. Look at my buddy Daniel Suarez. I mean, he was in trouble. And here he is, found himself back in the race, and he's running an A spot. When I say back in the race, I mean he's up here fighting for the, you know, yep. trying to get a top 10 finish. The Dillon brothers, 11th and 12th. See that four car 
behind Ty Dillon of Kevin Harvick. Right now, he's the first car one lap down. Get a caution anytime soon here. He might be back in this thing. He has a very fast race car. Oh, I agree. If he could get a caution now and get back on the lead lap, look out, because he does have a car that could compete. Yesterday in final practice, Harvick had the best consecutive lap times on all the major categories. They just started out all wrong, but maybe it'll end up good. Who knows? Maybe. Kurt Busch to the high side on Busher. Nice run off of turn two there for Kurt Busch. Really working that outside line good. Look at Matt DiBenedetto <laughs> right through the center of the racetrack. Gets a run also on Busher. Matty D getting it done. <laughs> and Kurt Busch takes off after Blaney. Regan. Really a very impressive run for this team. This team that I drove for actually last year quite a while. A little fun fact about this team. They started exactly eight years to this weekend with their first race in Texas. So a little bit of an anniversary for these guys. A nice run for Matt DiBenedetto. That it is. 46 laps to go in Bristol Tennessee the Penske cars out front will go side by side. Poking my chest what? out on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll help you. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> 36 to go. Brad Kozlowski out front. A lot of traffic ahead for he and Joey Logano. Mike, as we wind down, 35 laps to go here. This lap traffic is going to be a factor if this thing stays green. How you navigate through. Look at all those cars ahead of. Brad Keselowski, he's going to be coming up in. And this is where I give a slight advantage to Joey Logano. His car seems to work a little bit better in different uh, lanes on the racetrack. He might be able to use one of those lap cars as a pick. You know what I'm very happy about if I'm Brad Keselowski? That's my teammate behind me. Maybe he won't push me too hard till we get through this traffic. That's a chunk of rubber on the lens of the uh, Ford onboard camera on Logano's car. I, 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 mean, I got to tell you, I'm impressed with Brad Keselowski. Here he is with uh, what we got 32 laps to go leading this race and I wouldn't have picked him to win this race early on uh, but here he is with a shot at winning it and got his teammate right behind him that's a pretty good spot to be in. They both drop low on Matt Tift. Oh ho, ho. thought the 22 Logano. Yeah there he goes. He's push the issue. Excuse me. <laughs> 
And that's See, exactly what I was talking about. The two of Keselowski just can't roll the bottom as good as the 22 of Logano, and that showed right there. Well, I'm not sure that battle's over with. No, it's not over <laughs> not yet. That, that just happened to work out in Logano's favor right there. Kyle Busch. Chris Buescher, you saw him make a pit stop during break. They had a loose wheel. And he has gone two laps down. Kyle Busch sent right here, not that far. I mean, he's still in touch with the leaders. And if they get up there monkeying around or get hung up in a little bit of traffic, Kyle Busch will be back in this thing. Meanwhile, Ryan Blaney has his hands full of Kurt Busch. Uh, they have been bumper to bumper a couple of times during this run. Great job for Kurt. Qualified yep. terrible. Wasn't very happy, but boy, have they had a great race today. Good job for that one team. You know, I just wonder all these loose wheels today. This track has such high loads of these high bank turns. Is there something going on where those lugs just aren't pulling up tight enough to be able to handle these loads? Well, my experience has been as wheel spacers. And if you go through the uh, OSS of the optical scanning station over there and you got to work on your tread a little bit or your track wheel a little bit and you add a spacer, that can be a problem. Here comes Chase Elliott into the top 10, and if he finishes there, free fried pickles at Hooters. Hey, now. <laughs> or you get free 10, uh, 10 free boneless wings when you buy 10 on Monday if Chase wins. The rubber on the lens is also free. <laughs> 24 to go. Well, Logano just can't get away. Look, nobody can get away from anybody here. No, no. But Joey Logano, the leader, cannot get away from his teammate Keslowski. Now they have about a second on third place. I think I think he'd like to get away from a turn three. Yeah, you got a car in the wall. 42 is in the wall off two. Oh, yeah. I don't know. He got a problem Gosh, here. Twenty two to go boys Larry how's Larry how does that match up with your trends. We were a half a lap away from the <laughs> average last lap caution it comes about lap 479 normally so it's, it's coming right back on, Larry. right on time. Yeah it's coming back the trends are coming back. So it's so hard to tell with Kyle Larson whether or not he brushed the wall and then that cut the tire down because he runs an inch off of it every lap. Guys, I would say it's split decision time. We're going to go back racing probably with about 15 laps to go. We've got 16 drivers on the lead lap. They've got roughly about 45 to 50 green flag, flag laps on their tires. There is no way I don't think some of those guys at the very front are coming, but I think there'll be some near the rear that will come. Well, here's uh, Ryan Blaney's radio. Ah, uh, man, we got 45 on them, 20 to go. I really think if we come, a bunch will come behind us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Stuff to be watching. That's why the drivers don't make those decisions. No. Those guys sitting on the box do. You know what? Oh, I'm look hoping. at this. Look, so many of them coming. Kyle Busch did not. Kurt Busch did not. Here they come. Most of the cars on the lead lap did. And by the way, Kevin Harvick is going to be the free pass car. So what does that do for him? Puts it back on the lead lap. That's right. <laughs> so hard to be the leader in this situation because they're going to do the exact opposite of whatever you do. Took him 480 laps to make up four, but he's Kevin Harvick's now back on the lead lap. Reagan. Well, with wins already in their back pocket, there was never any debate. They knew they had to change Brad's race car just a little bit if they wanted to win. What was holding him back was a little bit too free on exit. Two tires for Brad. Vince. Joey Logano pitting from the lead. He said it's just a little bit too tight, so it's going to be a slight air pressure adjustment and four tires for the 12 of Ryan Blaney. You heard that radio. They couldn't decide. Do they come or don't they? It's a four tire change for the 12. We'll see if it pays off. Well, if I'm going to come, I'm going to get me four. But I really think if I, if I, if I was leading this race like Kyle Bush is, I'd stay out. 
I mean, Kyle Busch at the front now. Uh, you got his brother right there with him. I, I think I would have stayed out. I, I, I like the idea of staying out, but there's just not enough cars that stayed out behind him to keep those fresh tires from coming. Well, we're not going to have many laps to go, and it's so hard to pass. 19 to go. And look at the Bush brothers' record here. 13 victories combined, seven and six, most among active drivers. And they will restart up front. Jamie. Nice pep talk on the one radio curb Bush. He just told his team, hey guys, you win six races here by doing things like this, like staying out. This car is good. Keep your eye on that one, starting second to his brother. I remember what Richard Childress told Dale Earnhardt right here. Dale was screaming for tires, and Richard said, Dale, you've got 76 wins, and you're a seven-time champion. I think you can make it. And there is Richard Childress watching his grandsons compete here today. With 18 laps to go in Bristol, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Win your battles, earn your name. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. We will restart with 17 cars on the lead lap. Fox Sports supports proud to partner with Action for Healthy Kids, a nonprofit improving children's health and well-being in schools nationwide. You can involve your school in Every Kid Healthy Week, April 22nd to the 26th, by visiting their website. Another time I remember Junior Johnson right here. I'm running second to Dale. He said, Daryl. You want $50,000 or do you want $15,000? That's what second paid. That was a no brainer. So Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Bristol on Fox presented by AstraZeneca comes down to its final 17 laps. That's how many cars are on the lead lap. I wonder Larry this stop uh, coming in on this caution for tires for uh, both the two and the 22. When you've got wins in the bank, is it easier to make those decisions? Well, it is, but I go back to what DW and Jeff said earlier. I don't remember exactly which one said it. It's still a win out there. There's still a trophy and an opportunity to win at Bristol. Kurt Busch will restart on the inside. Last August, he led only the final 24 laps here. He has yet to lead today. In Darrell's press conference, he was asked what driver today most reminds him of his younger self. Kyle Busch is the most exciting driver I've ever, ever seen drive a stock car. The man puts on a show. And look, like I told you, I used to say, are you with the show? No, I am the show. Well, he can say when he's in the race, he is the show. Well, he's about to put on a show for you, DW. I tell you, I don't care what you do. You know one thing, you're going to watch Kyle Busch because he's going to do something that's going to make you go, wow. <laughs> the Bush brothers, Menard and Suarez, Newman and Keselowski, and they're doing a little reordering up there up in turn number three. Uh, oh, this, they're, they're, this is a mistake to, to try to make this and go back green. I, that, that's not the right, uh, on right here. line up there. Green flag. Kyle Busch out front. And Keselowski is being posted to come to pit road. What did he? Oh, oh, oh. He and Chase Elliott got together, but continue. Now let's keep an eye on this 14 car a little bit further up there with. Uh, Clint Boyer, he's the first one up there on fresh tires. Logano gets a launch, passes Suarez for fifth. I think they put a turbocharger on that 22 car. Man, he is going somewhere. Holy smoly. Boyer to the top side, and the call on Keselowski is failure to follow instructions for the, from the tower on where to line up. And Hamlin gets into Austin Dillon going into three. Everybody's getting into everybody. There's a lot of them back here and all banging on each other. And while that wild action's going on back there, Kyle Busch is just driving away from his brother, Kurt Busch. The only car that's got a shot at getting up there is a 22, and he's coming in a hurry, but I think he's going to run out of laps. 
Keslowski pits. The battle rages on. The Bush brothers. One, two. Yeah, new tires have not done near of what I thought they would. But I tell you what, right now, don't count Kurt Busch out. As soon as the 18 of Kyle Busch had to move to the top, the advantage went back to his brother. He seems to have a better race car up top. I'll tell you what, Logano's third. If the, Bush, if the Bush brothers get up here messing around a little bit, that 22 is going to be all over him. I don't think he's got time to get there unless something happens up here with these two Bush, the two Bush brothers. Unbelievable. 13 wins between these two guys leading right now. The 18 of Kyle Busch and the one of Kurt Busch. Seven and six is either going to be eight and six or seven <laughs> up. <laughs> Amen. Uh, seven to go, boys. <laughs> Blaney comes to life. He goes to the outside of Boyer. That's back at fifth place. Pretty well back. And here's Kozlowski's reaction to the penalty. What a bunch of clouds. To get behind the six. They just kept saying six on the inside behind the 41, and that was it. Yeah, so Kozlowski was supposed to be in the outside lane, which I thought he would have wanted to have been in that outside lane on that restart. You can see right there how Hard, the one car, Kurt Busch is pushing it. He brushed the wall a little bit off of turn two. Sixth place you're looking at with four to go. You know what? Oh, 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 oh. Kurt, Kurt Busch. Busch. Yeah. Kurt Busch got a little bit loose into one. I was going to say Kurt Busch just saying, oh, brother, where art thou? But he's right in front of you. <laughs> so close and yet so far, three to go. Three to go. I think he'll be OK. He got in the wall a little bit, but not real. I don't think it was heavy contact. It's, it also gave, Kurt, it gave Kyle Busch a little bit of breathing room, too. Oh, boy. Two to go. Only once have the Bush brothers finished 1-2 in the Cup Series. Sonoma 2015. There's the white flag. One to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Logano a distant third. Blaney and Hamlin fighting for fourth side by side. Menard, Boyer, Suarez. Kurt Busch, 54th career win for Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch second. And Kyle Busch ties Lee Petty for 10th on NASCAR's all time list. My, my, my. Well, you said it, yeah. Daryl. <laughs> he puts on the show. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got the wow factor down pat. That guy right there is pretty good, too, his crew chief. Got to remember something. They got to give him a good car, and they do that most every week. Eight. Eight. Thank you, guys. So make it 8-6 to six among the Bush brothers, the most successful brothers in Bristol history. They have now won the last four races here, in addition to being 1 2 today. And now seven of Kyle's eight Bristol wins came from a start of 12th or worse. Yep. And, and, and just think about this. I mean, lap one, he's caught up in a wreck, gets the rear bumper crushed in. He never, all day long, he was you know, not really happy with the race car. And now he's in victory lane, or going to go to victory lane, do a burnout here first. Kyle Busch, today's victory, fueled by Sunoco. Sunoco fueling victories all season long. Again, he's not the best of all time, but he's the best of this time. His time is now. What a spectacular start to the season. And he just capitalizes on every opportunity. Very seldom does he let a race get away. Last, may, last week maybe, but he capitalized this week. Gets in the lead, and when he gets in the lead, he's hard to get by. Vince Welch. What a decision with 20 to go, deciding not to take the tires, not to come to pit lane. 
a ton of damage on this race car that happened early in the race, and he still somehow managed to persevere to win for the eighth time at Bristol. Eight wins at this racetrack, and you did it with a car that's beat up as could be. What was your confidence level when you guys decided to stay out with 20 to go, Kyle? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We're crazy. We just do what we do, try to win. So uh, it's pretty awesome to, um, to be able to snooker those guys to be able to get our win here today at Bristol. Uh, love this place, and uh, it was fun to battle out the brother there at the end. I know we didn't quite get side by side racing it out. Um, I saw him working the top, and I'm like, I better go. And I got up there and was able to make some ground. So, um, man, just uh, awesome to be here in front of this crowd, everybody here at Bristol Motor Speedway. This Skittles Camry wasn't the best today, but uh, we made the most of not having the best and got everything we needed here at the end. Such an iconic place. What's it mean to have won here eight times? <laughs> it ain't 12, that's for sure. So I got more to go, but uh, we're getting there and it's fun. Um, you know, it's the, the most active driver, I guess. I think I've heard that, um, but you know, there's, uh, there's a lot more years left, hopefully. Well, he hadn't caught you yet, DW, but it was pretty special today. Eight wins at Bristol for Kyle Busch. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. It looked like much of the race today was going to be Clint Boyer's day. Then contact with the 22. Can you even describe the disappointment and frustration? Well, yeah. I mean, it's just you get a car that good. and Man, I've been been coming here a long time. I've gotten close a few times. just feel like, you know, damn, I want to win this place. I don't know. He was chopping down pretty hard. And... I know it's time to race, but he didn't, didn't leave me a whole lot of room right there off of four, and I got loose, and then by the time I got kind of wiggled up, we just barely touched, and just must have cut the valve stem out of it or something, but just crummy luck, man. Uh, Haas Automation Ford was really good. Fun place to race. You know, I, I'm sorry. If a fan can't like that kind of race, then I've been racing all my life, and, and I'm literally, you're out there, I mean, with a smile on your face racing, you know, two or three wide to watch that in the Xfinity race yesterday. Um, I feel, feel like we finally got a good, that traction compound down on the bottom, feel, finally got a good blend of it, right? However they're doing, whether it's a 50-50. It's 50-50. It's the 50-50, not it's the It's the 50-50 blend, so, not the 80-20. So the 80-20 is out, the 50-50 is in. I think it's a good blend. If you look, it's still there. You know, uh, over the last couple of years when we've been trying that, it's gone. Um, I mean, I was my strong suit was the bottom. That's where I was the best, and just unfortunately, uh, on our day again. Regan. Well, Joey Logano pits from the lead on that last pit sequence. How disheartening was it to see how many cars stayed out when you came down pit road? Yeah, I mean, I was hoping we had more laps left, uh, and I asked how many to go. He said 15. I was like, that's not good. Uh, you know, at least we were in the right lane, and the restart was a mess. I don't know what was going on there on the restart, but there's so many. We were all three, four wide. I don't know what the deal was, but, um, you know, outside of that, we had a great Auto Trader Mustang, a car that should have won the race. I feel like we won the race a couple times. We just didn't win it when it mattered the most uh, there at the end when the 18 got ahead and uh, just good strategy on their part. I think we had the fastest car. We just uh, we didn't uh, get all the pieces right. You can have the fastest car and don't uh, do the rest of the stuff, and you don't win. And you know, the 18 capitalized on that, and uh, congrats to them. But just thinks when you you think you passed, made the pass for the win, you, there's only a few laps to go. You think you did it, and uh, you just got to hold off the two, and then everything went the wrong way at the end. A strong day ends in disappointment for Joey Logano. Jamie? And it was a strong day indeed for Kurt Busch and the one team, and it was hard fought. Started 27th, and you guys never gave up. And then the restart right next to your brother. Take us through the race, and especially the last restart. It was a tough battle in our number one Chevy. Um, the Monster Energy team's doing a good job. That one's tough. I really wanted to beat him. I was going to wreck him. I was, I was wanting to stay close <laughs> enough so that when we took the white, I was just going to drive straight into three and four. I mean, he's already won. He figured he can give a little love to his brother. <laughs> no. Nah. Okay. Older brother, especially. I wanted that one bad. I feel like him right now. I'm all like, I'm all mad because I didn't win. But this car, we're, we're struggling on qualifying. We struggle on taking off. And I just can't get that right rear to grip until it gets heat in it. And it's hard to be patient when you're running for the win on old tires. So uh, I'm happy that we were in position to do it. Uh, th this group of guys, we're not quite ready to win yet, but that was close. And I was going to wreck my little brother to win today. But I just, <laughs> with three laps to go, I stepped out in turn one. And I wasn't close enough after that. But thanks to Matt McCall and everybody at Canassi. This number one monster Chevy's fast, but we just got to fine tune it all. Kurt Busch, best finish of the year, second. Toyota wins, Chevy second, Ford third.
after this. Kyle Busch rebounds to win in Bristol. I'm going to wreck my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> apropos. <laughs> I like that apropos. Uh, so yeah, Did you see he, he tied Lee Petty? 